this. The Mean Green, happy to be back on the field after COVID forced a cancellation last week. Southern Miss would like to forget about last week as well, but for a much different reason. They got blown out. With the Super Bowl champion, A.J. Hawk, I'm Chris Hassel. North Texas is able to play this week, but A.J., they're very shorthanded on defense due to COVID tracing. They're without about a half dozen regular contributors on D. Yeah, they really are. Through injury and contact tracing, they have been decimated, especially the linebacker room and in the secondary. So we will see a lot of guys kind of shifting around, jumping into positions they may not have played since high school. So that's going to be something to keep your eye on. And for Southern Miss, they haven't been able to stop anybody defensively. They need, they're going to need to find a way to stop North Texas run game because they are a well-balanced offense. As for North Texas, they've gone with a two-quarterback system most of this season. We might not see both quarterbacks tonight. That's because number 27, year old, that's 27-year-old, Austin Awney, the oldest quarterback in the country, is going to get the start. And if he plays like he did in the second half against SMU a couple of weeks ago, he'll stay in. Yeah, they're hoping to ride some of that momentum that he had in the second half against SMU. Although it was two weeks ago, they felt really good about where Ani was. And they have two very athletic quarterbacks. Ani maybe has the stronger arm, and they're hoping that he stays in all four quarters tonight. So number two is going to be looking number one's way. Jalen Darden had three touchdowns against this Southern Miss team a season ago and has five touchdowns in two games already this season. Jalen Darden is just such a dynamic guy. You could, wherever you put him, he, he may be undersized if you look at him. 5'9", almost 175 pounds, but the guy just finds a way. He's smart. He understands coverages. He can go sit in the void, and, and most of all, he knows how to beat man-to-man -man coverage, and that's what you're going to see a lot of times on third down when you need to move the chains. North Texas, top 10 in the country in total offense, top 10 in the country in scoring offense. For Southern Miss, also a great offense, but Jack Abraham, the great quarterback, is not going to have his starting center, Trace Clopton, and he's also not going to have Tim Jones, his great receiver, for a second straight week. Yeah, Tim Jones, an absolute, just a huge missing piece. But they didn't have him last week, and they were still able to, to put some production up. They didn't win the game, but Jack Abraham is counting on guys like Brownlee, Demarcus Jones, these guys, Narcus Driver, the tight end, who had a big touchdown last week. He's going to count on those guys for more production again tonight. And they're going to count on their defense to make a few more tackles. Last week, they gave up 430 yards on the ground to Tulane. Scotty Walden did something a bit unconventional in practice this week to try to wake his guys up. He did. Scotty told us on Tuesday they, practiced, they they tackled to the ground for a full 30 minutes, and that just doesn't happen a whole lot at the collegiate level. That's something that coaches tend to stay away from in season. So let's see if that will give them the extra physicality they need to find a way to slow down this North Texas offense. 15th meeting between Southern Miss and North Texas. The Mean Green have won seven. Southern Miss has won seven. It's a virtual toss-up in Vegas, and the over-under are as high as the temps tonight in the mid 70s. There is Seth Luttrell, the head coach of the North Texas Mean Green. Well, he's having a great time this season. I know they got beat last time out against SMU, but he's calling the plays again, and it's really a newfound joy for Seth Luttrell. And this is fifth season at North Texas, just a couple of years removed from a fantastic season. This program on the up and up, a down year last year, trying to get back to the heights that they're accustomed to here in Denton. And on the other side, Scotty Walden, the interim head coach after the, not the firing, but the, the, the leaving of Jay Hobson, left after the first game of the season. Scotty, 30 years old, and he's got that welder's mask on again tonight. It was a great start last week for Southern Miss. They led Tulane 14-0 right out of the jump. Speaking of jump, you're going to see a lot of that from Scotty Walden, a ton of energy, but then Tulane, Dominated the rest of the way, winning 66 to 24. He said the guys responded well in practice this week. Southern Miss will be kicking it away. Briggs Bourgeois to boot it from the 35 yard line. And let's keep track of the punts. Might be able to count them on one hand by night's end. Nick Smith deep to receive for North Texas. One of the deep men, anyway. And this one is going on one hop. And some running room for DeAndre Torrey out across the 40-yard line. Nice return for Torrey, his first kick return of the season. And now we're going to see Austin Ani, who played right down the street at Argyle, about 10 minutes away from the stadium. Class of 2012, that's not a misprint. He was drafted by the Yankees in the second round back in 2012. 
spent six years in the organization, decided baseball wasn't for him, enrolled at Arkansas in the spring of 2018, and then decided, I'm coming home and making his first college start today. He's a 27-year-old sophomore, the oldest quarterback in the FBS. And he hands it off to start the game. North Texas is also shorthanded on offense. They are without their star running back in this game. That would be Oscar Attaway, a freshman who was averaging about 111 yards per game to start the season, but not playing tonight. But they're confident in Trey Siggers and company, and Siggers gives them two nice runs to start this game. It'll be third and short. Yeah, third and short. The, this North Texas offense, I mean, it's no secret. They need to have a fast start, and they need to find a way to win the turnover margin. When they do that, they win a lot of football games. They can't fall behind early. Right back to Siggers, who picks up the first down. North Texas knows what opponents have done to Southern Mississippi this season running the football. Southern Miss give it up over 250 yards per game on average in their three losses to start this season. And this North Texas offense, Chris, is averaging 286 yards rushing a game. I know there's only been two games. First pass of the game, and Ani going for it all. He's got him, but it's incomplete. Jalen Darden had it in his breadbasket. But Kyle Hemby was there on the coverage, maybe got just enough of that ball to knock it loose. Look at Hemby with that right arm. Oh, the ball just went right through. It looked like actually Darden would have probably found a way to pull this thing off of his right thigh. But Hemby, just a heck of a job sticking with it and getting that ball out at the end. That'll be a matchup to watch tonight as Jason Pirtle makes the catch for North Texas. Pickup of seven yards, and we have an injured North Texas player. That's Jair Shorter, the redshirt sophomore from Killeen, Texas. And they were waiting for him to have a breakout game, and this is not good to see 90 seconds in ahead of a third and three. Didn't quite see what happened there. We'll show you the looks that we have on the other side. A quick timeout here in a scoreless game opening drive for North Texas. Now Jair Shorter, the injured Mean Green player, was helped to a standing position but did not put any weight on that left leg. Here's what happened. Got rolled up on by his own player, uh, Jason Pirtle, during that tackle by Malik Shorts. And they were actually bringing Clark out onto the field, but they were able to get him onto his feet. So that's at least uh, a small good sign. DeAndre Torrey gets the handoff and a first down on third and short. So a couple of third and shorts for North Texas and a couple of conversions here on this opening drive of the game. And quickly another handoff. And this time Torrey stopped behind the line. It was Taj Sykes, the nose tackle. Third tackle for a loss this season. That's tops on this Southern Mississippi defense. Yeah, keep your eye on number three, Taj Sykes up front for Southern Miss, he's a big part of this run defense. Ani going to the end zone, man has a step, incomplete again. Just off the fingertips of Greg White. Let him maybe just a little too much, but it did hit his hands. Once again, North Texas, this offense is so close to getting six on the board. This would have been a spectacular catch from Greg White, but I'll tell you what, Chris, Austin Ani throws a very pretty deep ball. That thing is such a tight spiral just out of the reach of the of Greg White going deep again end zone again and he's 0 for 3 to start this game started to see why he's first in the nation averaging over 20 yards of completion they'll throw it deep but unfortunately a couple of drops in the end zone and now they have to run out the field goal unit for what will be close to a 50 yard attempt here Ethan Mooney First field goal attempt of the season. It's from just inside 50. We'll call it 49 yards. Had a long of 51 last season when he hit 16 of 20. Missed the first game due to injury. Didn't attempt a field goal in the second game. Number zero kicking his first and kicking it through. 49 yards and North Texas leads 3-0.
I want to welcome those of you that watch Florida State and Jacksonville State. With A.J. Hawk, I'm Chris Hassel. This is Stadium's coverage of Conference USA football. As North Texas takes a 3-0 lead on Southern Miss. The first of many scoring plays tonight. Not expecting many punts. Two of the best offenses in the country to this point. North Texas came into this game eighth in scoring at 46 a game and fifth in total offense at 619 a game. Austin Aune, the quarterback, 27 years old, just a sophomore, was drafted by the Yankees back in 2012, spent six years in that Yankees organization, had a couple of great passes that could have ended up in long touchdowns, but his receivers couldn't hang on. So Southern Miss holds for three, and in a game like this, A.J., holding the team to a field goal is like a punt. That's huge, especially on the first drive. Maybe, hey, you know what, Austin Aune, this is his first start of the season. Yeah, he's got a bunch of time. Maybe he's a little bit juiced up, Chris. Maybe you go get a little excited for your first one, and maybe you overthrow a few of your uh, receivers, but I think he'll settle in and be fine. Jack Abraham comes in leading Conference USA in yards per game with 292. Started his career at Louisiana Tech, then he went the JUCO route, and then to Southern Miss, where he's been the past few seasons, preseason All-Conference USA. A couple of years ago, led FBS in completion percentage at 73%. Last season against North Texas just lit them up. We were at that game in Hattiesburg. 421, three touchdowns, and no picks. And he's licking his chops again. For those of you just joining us as we get an offside penalty, North Texas is going to be without at least a half dozen regular contributors on defense because of COVID tracing from over a week ago. Offsides, defense, number 97, five-yard penalty, remains first down. Chris Bynum, our official, making that call. North Texas's game last weekend against Houston was canceled due to positive COVID tests. And a lot of contact tracing totally took out the linebacking core. That's why they couldn't play. And tonight, still without a bunch of them. On first and five, Jack Abraham looking to go deep. And that one is juggled and falls to the turf. There is a penalty flag as Jason Brownlee went up for that. He had that 88-yard touchdown catch last week against Tulane. He also had a great one-handed catch. And they're going to need more from him tonight because once again, they're without Tim Jones, their best receiver with a hamstring injury, missing his second straight game. as we get the call from Chris Bynum. Pass interference, defense, number eight. 50-yard penalty, automatic, first down. Let's take a look again. That's John Davis, the redshirt junior, seeing some of his first action. Hey, check, look at this right here, guys. Right in the middle, Frank Gore picking up the blitzing Chris Thornton. Frank Gore's not the biggest, but I tell you what, he did his job there. And there is Frank Gore running for a first down. They're waiting for his breakout game. True freshman, of course, the son of the third leading rusher in NFL history. That one goes for 14. And they just love this kid at Southern Miss. Hey, no better way to earn the trust of your quarterback and the rest of the team and your coaching staff than to step up there and, and pick up a blitzer in the hole to give your quarterback the opportunity to push the ball down the field. So in. North Texas territory. Abraham has time, one on one coverage, but overshoots the intended receiver, Jason Brownlee. Well, like father, like son, right? But so far, son has only played for one team. Frank Gore Sr. had Frank Gore Jr. when he was a member of the Miami Hurricanes, and what? A long career he's had in the NFL. You ever tackle him, AJ? I attempted to a few times, yeah. <laughs> that guy is uh, he's tough as nails. Another handoff and another big hole. D. Baker inside the 25 yard line. But he's shaken up. It's a pickup of 19. Southern Miss hasn't got the running game going at all this season, averaging just 98 yards a game. And Baker. Slow to get up. Every 
but walking to the sideline just fine. Looks like it might have been something with the hand. Something upper body. Which is all Southern Miss will give us, by the way. It's like hockey. It is hockey. That's what hockey Southern tells Miss. you. It's upper body or lower body. Mike McCarthy, the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys now. I was with him in Green Bay for a long time. He'll tell you. Upper body, lower body. That's it. <laughs> he said, if you want to tell the media anything else about your injury, it's up to you. But I don't see how that's productive for you. It's a good impression. I could hear him saying that right now. <laughs> so Frank Gore, once again, the running back first and ten. Knocking on the door of the red zone, slant over the middle, caught by Demarcus Jones, and he got a huge pick from the umpire. 22-yard touchdown. We'll show it to you again. I don't know if they drew it up like this or not, but the umpire just set a great pick to free him. Little RPO action. Perfect mechanics by Abraham. And hey, I tell you what. If Demarcus Jones did not have that planned, it was still very impressive to watch. But hey, they're on the field. The, the referees, hey, they got to find a way to get out of there, and everything's moving pretty quickly down there. So you might as well try to use them to your advantage if you can. The assist to the umpire Joe Nanis, four plays, 75 yards in just over a minute. And Southern Miss starts on offense like they did a week ago with a touchdown on the opening drive. Demarcus Jones had 11 catches last week, but he didn't reach the end zone. He has tonight. 7-3 Southern Miss. Well, both teams scoring on the opening possession, but North Texas only musters a field goal. Southern Miss uses the umpire to score a touchdown. Chris, I'm going to circle three people right here. <laughs> we got Demarcus Jones right here in the slot. I'm not going to circle three. I lied to you, but he's going to run up here. You'll see. Watch him use the referee as a pick, and poor John Davis is chasing him in pursuit. And the ref sets an absolutely beautiful pick, something that Phil Jackson would be jealous of. Well, when the Conference USA officials get together this week and they go to the film room, going to get a standing standing applause for Joe Nanis, the umpire there. Didn't even flinch. Great he even form. Knew. Yeah, I don't know if he knew that he got ran into by John Davis. The 6'1", 190-pound junior crumpled to the ground. But the old man umpire stays upright. And Southern Miss in just four plays goes right down the field and scores on this depleted North Texas defense. Southern Miss has to feel pretty good that they had some success running the ball there on their first drive of the night. Yeah, 33 rushing yards on that opening drive. They would love to be a little more balanced on offense and also I mean time of possession definitely can help your defense out. You know when your defense has struggled in the back end and you're facing a North Texas offense like this that can put up so many points so quickly. It's, it's good to get them some rest and keep your offense out there. Andrew Stein pops that up. They let it fall. That's a free football and Southern Miss has it. Malik Shorts with the huge special teams play. When you're an up man, AJ, you got to make that catch. I believe there's a, a fair catch thrown in the air, but then they didn't go after it. Look down here. If I'm on the right side here, it looks like they threw up their hand for a fair catch, but then they didn't go after this ball. No, he's pointing back, actually. He's pointing back, saying, no, this is yours. He, but Nick Smith. That, was, that was Nick Smith. He was too far away, though. Isn't that on the tight end there to make that fair catch? That's Asher Aberling, a redshirt freshman, who pointed behind him. But it looked like he could just take a couple of steps back and catch that himself. It just depends, really, what the rules are. A lot of teams will have rules to where if you're in that position, they'll say, hey, if the, if the ball is coming to you, fair catch it, but don't take any steps backwards. Do okay. not go backwards to try to make a catch. That's always for the people behind you to come up and grab it. So Southern Miss, touchdown. They get it right back. They're going for the end zone again, and they've got a first and goal. Brandon Hayes, his first touch as a member of the Golden Eagles. AJ? Yeah, let's see this, Chris. I, yeah, I, a lot of times they'll tell you not to go backwards if you're not the, the back line there. It definitely put Nick Smith in a tough situation to cover a lot of ground quickly. It was also just a well executed kick too. That's what you want to do. Put it kind of in between people and force them to make a decision. That's what Southern Miss did and North Texas just was not able to find a way to execute and get on that ball. Well, North Texas coaching staff has really challenged Dion Noville to come to play. They thought the nose tackle would be the strength of their defense. Made a great tackle there. 
and a loss of four on Frank Gore Jr. And now it's second and goal from the 11 yard line. Abraham turns and hands to Gore. Big hole left side, and Frank Gore Jr. has the touchdown. The first touchdown of his career. The true freshman from Miami doing it like dad. It's amazing with all you've seen from Frank Gore Jr. already in this early season that this is a, the first time he's actually gotten into the end zone. He's been very productive, just hasn't gotten the end zone. Had a few pitches that uh, at different times that people questioned. Uh, but you know what? Frank Gore getting in the end zone early here for Southern Miss. Chris, we are in the middle of some fireworks already offensively. Two scoring drives of about a minute for Southern Miss. This one three plays, 24 yards. Frank Gore from 11. Marcus Driver up there leading him through. Doesn't even have to get a shoulder there on Quinn Whitlock. Just does enough. Frank Gore to get in the end zone. And there's his head coach who just loves him. Scotty Walden, 30 years old. Look at the energy. Says he doesn't drink any coffee, no caffeine. This is just how he was born. His mom always told him, you know what, Scotty? It's OK to be unique. And boy, is he ever. And the kids have to love him. How could you not? I mean, it's infectious. And you can tell, like, it seems authentic. It's very real, just who he is. This is eerily similar to last week when Southern Miss took a 14-0 lead against Tulane in the first five minutes. They now have a 14-3 lead on North Texas in the first five minutes. And North Texas got the ball first. We expected a lot of scoring. Another short kick. This one will be fair caught. And this time the up man was a little bit farther back. Our players to watch tonight. Jason Brownlee for Southern Miz had a breakout game last week, 88-yard touchdown, a great one-handed grab. And Jalen Darden for North Texas, five touchdowns already this season. Well, he has one already that he wants back, though, A.J. Dropped the sure touchdown on the opening drive. Yeah, if he's uh, anything like everyone tells us here in North Texas, he that, that drop is eating him alive right now. He's going to want to get back on the board and get the ball in his hands and try to get in the end zone. So their first drive ended up in a field goal. And this is their second drive after they uh, completely botched a kickoff return after Southern Miss's first touchdown. That one incomplete, intended for Greg White. So Austin Awning off to a slow start to this one. Second down and 10. The opening drive, it was mostly runs to get him down into field goal range. And the pocket holds another deep ball white incomplete on the coverage was Eric Scott Jr. They've thrown at Eric Scott twice now. That one was it was a bit odd. The ball was in the air for a while. Looked like Greg White could have possibly had a chance to come back and grab that thing. As we see him walking off the sideline forcing a third and long here for North Texas and third and ten. In a game where you might not be able to afford many punts with the amount of scoring that we're going to see. North Texas two for three on third downs, but both of those conversions Look all this space were right third there, and shorts. All this space right there if you want it. Deontay Simpson. And the ball is out and it's recovered by Southern Miss. TQ Newsom. Give Southern Miss great starting field position for the second straight drive. Recovered by Southern Miss. First down. Let's see here. Just a three man rush. They add the linebacker in as a fourth. Man. Dominic Quiwan there comes in, finds a way not only to get the sack cause fumble but then you get it recovered and you put the Hulk hand on yeah. oh, I think my kids have that thing at home it's the turnover prop it's something different every week it has something to do with the opponent this week of course it's the mean green so you got the incredible Hulk in both of them the strip sack and the fumble recovery Kwiwan helping Southern Miss 
try to take control of this game in the first quarter. Abraham over the head of the intended receiver, Antoine Robinson. We're not even five minutes into this game. We were talking to Scotty Walden this week, and he said, you know, last week we got up 14-0. That's we, we've got to keep the foot down. We got to keep the pedal to the metal. We did not do that. We, we totally tensed up. And that's when things completely swung to the two lane side. Frank Gore again upended at the 16 yard line pickup of four. I would bet this Southern Miss offense wants to rely heavily on the run game. They want to find a way like they, they've had some success early. They're up 14 three in scoring position here. They would love to get another touchdown on the board and jump up 21 three early. But they want to ride Frank Gore, I think, as much as they possibly can. 42% this season on third downs. That's in the back half of Conference USA. Abraham dumps it off underneath, but good defense. And Kyle Sanders in on the tackle, pickup of just two, and the field goal unit is out. That's a good stop for this North Texas defense that's been shredded so far in this game. Yes, it was, Chris. And Kyle Sanders moving from his normal Hawk safety position down to Sam linebacker tonight. Finding a way to, to get off the field on third down and force a field goal to try to just limit some of the damage and not fall behind too early, too much too early. Briggs Bourgeois, four for five on the season from 31 yards. And Southern Miss is up 14. Nearly midway through this first quarter. Tons of action. Southern Miss has been here before. Denton County, Texas, home of Bowling for Soup. The great band and the North Texas Mean Green down 17 3 here early in the first. Hey, Campus Insiders with Brett McMurphy and Matt Hayes airs every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern on WatchStadium.com. It's your place for the latest news and information in college football. Those guys breaking news left and right. Stadium, welcome to the game. This is Stadium's coverage of Conference USA football and don't look right at it. Beautiful sunset here. Mid 70s. Few clouds. But a rain shower right over the head of Seth Luttrell right now. Because a couple of miscues have the mean green trailing by 14. That's that same kickoff that they recovered a couple of kickoffs ago. That time a fair catch. So Austin Oni started this game for North Texas. The first two drives only managed a field goal and a turnover. Jason Bean, who was the start of the first couple of the games in this Texas two-step, was not expected to see much action if Oni played the way he did against SMU in the second half a couple of weeks ago. There's Bean. Oni had four touchdowns on six second-half drives against SMU, and they're sticking with him at least for now. And they'll go back to the run game, which was pretty good on the opening drive to get him into field goal range. Trey Siggers picks up four. If you're just joining us, North Texas is without a couple of running backs as well. Oscar Attaway is out. The freshman running back averaging over 100 yards per game on the ground. So is Evan Johnson. And Isaiah Johnson has been moved to defense because of all the COVID tracing on the defensive side of the ball. It'll be third down and four after those two run plays. Yeah, interesting to run both on first and second down. They must have had the numbers that they wanted. But Seth Luttrell, his offense is back into another third down here where if they don't pick it up, they'll be forced to punt once again. Oni rolls out right. He can run for it. He will. Not nearly as fast as Jason Bean, who's a great athlete. 10 300 meter guy. But Ani, those old 27 year old legs still work. I'll tell you what, I think it's pretty athletic quarterback room. Mm -hmm. Ani played Major League Baseball for six years. Jason Bean can absolutely fly when he does have the ball in his hands. They are both very athletic. A handoff to DeAndre Torrey up the middle. So they're down to three running backs, but they're comfortable with those three DeAndre Torrey, Trey Siggers, and Nick Smith. All of those guys have been 
with North Texas for several years. Four touchdown drives on six second half possessions against SMU, a game that North Texas lost here, 65-35. And the following week at Houston canceled due to COVID. Patient run on second and six to set up a third and two for Torrey. I mean, I guess when you look at the Southern Miss D and you see they gave up 430 yards on the ground last week, you say, we're going to run it. They won't run on third down. They'll complete the pass and get the first down. That's Roderick Burns. Yeah, it seems like North Texas and Seth Luttrell, they want to commit to the run game and stay with it. They know this will pay dividends in the third and fourth quarter as long as the game is still close and you have a chance. These runs early on, although it may seem conservative at times, I think they're, they're hoping they can tire this Southern Miss defense out a little bit and try to, uh, to win the game up front. Seventh play of the drive already. Ani has a wide open receiver. Deontay Simpson still on his feet, still inbounds, stepping out at the 24 yard line. Talk about a Texas two step. That's good for 26, and look at those quick feet. Good ball by Ani, and you'll see that Simpson, ooh, just a little juke around, then he has the strength to break the tackle, breaks a couple tackles. You just can't get him down. He says, All right, I'll take myself out of bounds. Undershirt ripped and everything. They mark him out at the 25, and Torrey gets the handoff. Again, tough sledding up the middle. It's Hayes Maples again. Chris, we had him last week. He racked up 15 tackles. Although they lost, he was still all over the place. Richard Sophomore, hometown kid from Hattiesburg. That's the most tackles by Golden Eagle since 2014, those 15 last week. Kyle Hemby, the great cornerback, slowly being helped off the field. Preseason All-Conference USA. Well, they're going to need him if they want to stop this prolific passing attack. They've done a great job so far, but they've been helped by a couple of drops. Hemby is a very crucial part of this defense for Southern Miss, the leading tackler on this team last season. Let's see if he's just banged up a little bit and he can find a way to get back in. But I tell you what, they're going to they're going to miss him if he can't come back in the game. Second and eight, another handoff. And Torrey again stacked up at the line of scrimmage. Tyler Barnes and Hayes Maples on that tackle for a loss. And it's third down and nine. Five minutes to go here in the first. Southern Miss has scored. 17 straight after that opening drive field goal by North Texas. Screen pass to the tight end. And it's close to a first down. Looks like they'll give it to him. Jason Pirtle, his two catches all season coming in, but a couple tonight, and that one really big. Heck of a job by Ani getting rid of the ball with, with defenders right in his face, and Pirtle breaking the tackles and getting the first down. Again, the run play up the middle for three or four. DeAndre Torrey. This has been a slow but steady drive down the field for Seth Luttrell's offense. Again, he's calling the plays once more. And another run between the tackles. Torrey setting up a third down and two. And as we've seen so far, if they can get it to third and two, third and three, they've picked it up each and every time. Quick snap, handoff Torrey. This time he's not going to get the yardage. It'll be fourth and one. What do you do, AJ? I think Seth Luttrell goes for it. It looks like they're sending, uh, sending in the troops to go for this one. Yeah, Trey Siggers, the running back, comes in along with another tight end, Jake Roberts. So they're going heavy. Two tight ends with both receivers wide left. Four of six on fourth downs this season. Siggers stacked up right at the line to gain. It'll depend on the spot, and I think he's short. He is. The Southern Miss defense does it again. First down, Southern Miss. This Southern Miss defense 
Starting with this D-line, they absolutely stand up, especially, I don't know how many plays that drive was exactly yet, Chris, but that's the end of a long, long drive where they have been out there for a while, and this is just grit and effort right here. I think that was the 14th play of that drive, AJ, and zero points to show for it. Scotty Walton told us he was impressed by how his team practiced this week. We talked about in the open how they, they had a 30-minute session where they were tackling full contact on Tuesday, which is something you don't do a whole lot here. But, hey, maybe that worked. Maybe they'll do it every Tuesday. Now backed up. Frank Gore Jr. gives him some breathing room. Pick up a five on first down. This North Texas defense hasn't been able to stop Southern Miss yet. Three possessions, three scores, but the last two possessions started inside the 30-yard line of North Texas. Gore's helmet came off, get a little adjustment there and get him back out there. Already 49 rushing yards for Southern Miss. That's half their average, and we're not even through the first quarter yet. Abraham turns and hands once again. And this time, not much for Darius Mayberry. His first carry of the season. Just one yard, so pretty important third down early in this game for the North Texas defense. Down 17-3. Let's see if North Texas brings some pressure here. Only have two sacks on the season so far through two games. Let's see if they try to heat him up, get Southern Miss to, to make a mistake. Get their first turnover of the year maybe for, for North Texas. Yeah, that was one of the emphasis in the offseason, get more turnovers. That has not happened yet. Abraham all day, three-man rush, finally in trouble and finally taken down. KD Davis, the most important defender on this team. They get him back after missing the SMU game, and he makes a big play to get him off the field. Giant, giant play here. KD Davis is so valuable. If you watch right here at the bottom of your screen, number 10, Mikhail Sanders, he picks up a crosser that Jack Abraham was looking to go to. Abraham realizes there's nothing open. I got to pull it down and run. And guess who's there waiting? KD Davis to force the punt and give North Texas a chance here on the short field. And into punt, Griffin Fleming, who will stand about six yards deep in his own end zone. Jalen Darden standing at midfield to return it. And it's a fair catch at the 45-yard line. Juggled momentarily, so they'll mark it at the 44. Seth Luttrell in his fifth season here at North Texas. Played for Bob Stoops and Mike Leach at Oklahoma. Coached with Leach at Texas Tech, and Luttrell is an offensive mind if you can't tell by those coaches. Also coached with Mike Stoops at Arizona, Kevin Wilson at Indiana, and Larry Fedora at UNC. And talking to him this week, he's having so much more fun this season compared to last, and it has nothing to do with the record or the big offensive numbers. He said COVID really put things into perspective for him. Weren't able to get out there for spring ball, for summer ball, and he's calling plays again, which he loves. Jalen Darden. Picks up three on that swing pass. A minute to go here in the first. It's funny when you talk to anybody in the North Texas uh, <laughs> with the program, and you ask, well, how's Seth doing through all of this? Like, oh, Seth's loving it. He's having a great time. He loves calling the plays. He's energetic. And we saw, like, he has a plan. That, that last drive where they got stopped on fourth down, he mixed in the run and passed a lot. He wasn't freaking out. He's not panicking. We're down 17-3 early. We've had a bunch of miscues. You could tell he feels like they can have success on the ground today. And he's not scared to, to stick with it. Hasn't happened yet, and we're nearing the end of the first quarter. Third down and six. North Texas, five of eight on third downs so far. Ani. Threw it behind his receiver, and it's incomplete. It was intended for Austin Ogenmaken, and he looked like he kind of slipped as he tried to put on the brakes. And it's been a rough start for Ani compared to how he did against SMU. You wonder if they might go to Jason Bean at some point if this continues. 
And there is Jason Bean standing right next to Ani, the 27-year-old Ani, the 20-year-old Jason Bean. And the first punt of the game for North Texas. Rugby style. Fair catch. 18-yard line by number 18, Natron Brooks, with one second to play here in the first quarter. Southern Miss has to be feeling great. Punt of 34 yards, no return. You really had to wonder how they were going to respond after that embarrassing beatdown last week at the hands of their rival Tulane. They led 14-0 and somehow lost by 42. <laughs> Give credit to Brooks there, too. They're doing the little things. That's what Scotty Walden, I know, wants his team to always do the small things. No matter what it is, it's important. Right there, Brooks, fair catching that ball, probably saved the team 15 yards and hidden yards because that ball was going to bounce and go towards the end zone, and they had some guys in coverage ready to down it for North Texas. Final play of the first quarter. Abraham with some pressure. Incomplete, some contact, but no penalty markers. Scotty Walden out on the field wondering how. But I think he'll take it. Southern Miss has scored 17 straight. They're up 14 going to the second. Seth Luttrell in the mean green, losing at home 17-3. This is Seth pregame with Scotty Walden. You go back about four years, and these two had a conversation on this campus then. It was quite the story that Scotty Walden told us on the phone this week. He was coaching here in Texas. Scotty Walden is from Texas. And he said Seth got the job. He just came, showed up one day, wanted to talk with Seth, brought his resume, and Seth's assistant kept saying, just leave. We're not, you're not going to get in with Seth today. He's busy. He just took over. He's busy. He's busy. He waited eight hours. Finally got in. It's like a scene out of a movie. Now, he didn't get a job, but he says he'll always be grateful to Seth Luttrell for seeing him that day. He was the head coach at East Texas Baptist. And then came here to Southern Miss, was... Uh, an assistant offensive coordinator when Jay Hobson stepped down after the first game and he's named interim head coach, the youngest in the country, 30 years old. It's pretty, pretty funny too when you, you look at these two head coaches, like the, the contrasting personalities kind of on right. the field. Seth seems to have this quiet intensity about him. Scotty, there's nothing quiet about him and he is just going to let it all out there. And they'll pick up the first down on the ground with Frank Gore Jr. who notched his first touchdown as a collegiate athlete in the first quarter pickup of eight and this has been the, the Southern Miss team that fans have been wanting to see this season 0 and 3 at home to start the season uh, he's got a ways to go to catch Frank now those are NFL touchdowns as well if we add the college touchdowns in <laughs> he's probably up near 100. But it's going to be a, a long and very successful career for Frank Gore at the college level. That pass low for Jason Brownlee. Neither quarterback has been able to get anything going through the air. Abraham, 3 for 7, 41 yards. And Austin Ani, 6 for 12, 49 yards. Really, the reason why Southern Miss has this substantial lead is some big miscues by North Texas. One in the kicking game on a kickoff that was recovered by Southern Miss and then a fumble as well near the red zone. Ten points off turnovers for Southern Miss in the first quarter. Second and ten and the back shoulder pass does not work for Brownlee. They've been targeting him a lot and they said looking back at the tape last week they should have gone to him more. Well, They've, they've tried in this game. Just hasn't worked to this point. Three targets, no catches. Brownlee, big, long guy, long receiver, one of those guys that can break it open at any time. Definitely a deep ball threat. Huge, big playability. If you're uh, Jack Abraham and you feel like you're in a tight spot, I may just throw it up into 17's direction. Hopefully he time finds out, a way to bring it down. Defense. 
Go Texas. They're first. So a timeout, North Texas ahead of this third down and 10, but they might be settling be in here after timeout. some early miscues in this game. You had the drop touchdown from Jalen Darden. That would have been a sixth touchdown. Another drop touchdown on the very next play. And then a kickoff miscommunication. Effectively, it ends up being an onside kick and a recovery. And then a fumble by Austin Oni set up another Southern miss score. And they've scored 17 straight against a slightly favored North Texas team tonight. But I got to be honest, this is not what I was expecting. I thought we'd see a lot more passing yards, uh, a lot fewer plays made by the defense and special teams. And the last three drives, a fumble, a turnover on downs, and a punt for North Texas. Austin Oni looking for another crack. Third down and 10 after the North Texas timeout for the 34-yard line. Abraham with an empty backfield. Has time over the middle, complete. Jones at the 45-yard line. Demarcus Jones, who has the 22-yard touchdown grab, gets another for 21. Demarcus Jones, are you kidding me? That's what you call high-pointing the football, going up at a tight spot, snatching it out of the air and bringing it down. Huge third and long conversion there from Southern Miss. They're trying to keep this thing going in the right direction. They're up 14 now. They would love nothing more than to get this ball in the end zone and go up 21. Scotty Walden calls Demarcus Jones a blue collar cat who blocks his tail off and is getting better each week. I'm not noticing the blocking. I'm noticing the great catching. I mentioned those 11 receptions last week. Jackson Gibbs, I'm hoping he was trying to punch the football, but I just saw him throw a, an uppercut. I think he was trying to dislodge the football. Didn't happen. Pickup of one. Let's take another look. I think they were holding him up. And look. <laughs> hey, oh, yeah. He actually, he actually made contact with the ball a couple times. Credit to Frank Gore for holding on to that sucker. He and threw th about three huge right hands. It looked like it connected. And then he got a shove from Kalik Washington, the 339-pound left tackle. Trouble and a tackle for loss. Devontae McCray, loss of five as they tried some trickery with the backup quarterback, Tate Watley. Now Watley heads to the sideline. Jack lost his shoe and lost six yards. Oh, I thought he got Jack Abraham's shoe off. Yeah, it's not a great, uh, doesn't feel good if you're Watley there. But hey, Devontae McBray comes around the edge and makes a play for him. Another one of those North Texas defenders who's been challenged. They think he can play much better. The redshirt sophomore from Miami. Abraham checks it down. Pass complete, but a big hit right away and no harm done. As Upton Stout makes the stop. The true freshman from Houston had a breakout camp and eight tackles against SMU. Upton Stout, the true freshman. Moves over to the left cornerback position. Now you have other guys kind of shuffle around. Comes up huge and makes the big physical tackle there to, to force a Southern Miss punt. Under 11 minutes to play here in the first half. Southern Miss was 17 straight to take a 17-3 lead. Nice punt. Great hang time, gonna bounce inside the 10 and hang up at the two. Down by Cameron Harrell at the two yard line. A Griffin Fleming textbook. And North Texas is backed way up. Other miss leading 17-3 here at North Texas. As stadium's coverage of Conference USA football takes us to Apogee Stadium, a place owned by Mason Fine for many a year. Check him out on the far right. 12,505 career passing yards in Conference USA, only behind Redmond, Cobb, Cato, Keenum. And Mason Fine currently coaching in high school at his old Oklahoma High School. 
still training. Trying to get a couple of workouts, but he's a quarterback coach and talks all the time with Seth Luttrell. That's a great play on first down to get him out from underneath their own goal post there. As Austin Awney finds Deontay Simpson for 14. Yeah, they're going to try to get Awney into some kind of rhythm here, you would imagine. They need something to kind of put him over the edge, kind of give him that spark they need. They just have been, there's just been miscues at pivotal moments for this North Texas offense so far tonight. Yeah, they had a fumble. They had a turnover on downs. They've tried running the ball between the tackles. And they only have 40 yards on the ground to show for it. It's really two, three, four yards a pop. This time, Ani keeps. And it's another short gain, setting up a third down and five. And it's been Austin Ani the whole way so far for North Texas. It had been a two quarterback system coming into today with Jason Bean. Ani, seven for 13, 63 yards. To his credit, though, he did have a couple of touchdowns dropped on the opening drive. Play fake on third down, complete to Darden. Can he get there? He can. Jalen Darden picks up the first down. He says, keep feeding me. It's a nice play call here, third and five. You go to your number one receiver. He reads the coverage and he sits down and starts to just to, to try to drift back out away from the, the coverage. And Ani puts it on him. Not an easy throw either to the wide side of the field. And Darden does enough to get the first. Ani dumps it underneath. Complete positive yardage on first down as they go to the air again. Jason Pirtle with his third catch, a pickup of eight. On second and two, that one batted down by Tyler Barnes, who had a pick in their three-game homestand. And that'll set up a third down and two. North Texas has seen third down after third down so far tonight. They've done a pretty good job. Six of ten so far. This is their 11th third down in just a quarter and a half. And here comes the safety. Blitz balls out. And Southern Miss is on it. Second turnover of the game, the second fumble of the game by Austin Ani. And that's Andrew Cole who says, I am not giving this puppy up. Slow down. Watch Ani here. He tries to pull this thing. And let's just see what got. Dislodged. I think he was trying to pull that. It looked like they had numbers on the edge, and that was the proper read to pull it. But I just don't know if Nick Smith clamped down too hard on it. This is why this is always a difficult situation. Yeah, he tried to pull that quick. If you see, they had the edge there on the left side. Ani definitely felt like he had enough space where he could pick up two or three yards and get the first. But yeah, I think they got spooked because they saw Natron Brooks sprinting in on the blitz. And here's a jet sweep to start the drive for Southern Miss. And a good start to the drive for Brandon Hayes, who's seen that play a couple of times so far in this game. Had a 17-yarder in the first quarter, and this one good for 10 and a first down. And once again, Frank Gore Jr. on the perimeter throwing a block. He got a good block on Cam Johnson down the field. Now the first three drives, Southern Miss had 17 points and 105 yards. They had a couple quick one minute touchdown drives since then the North Texas D has been good but they are backed up yet again Frank Gore no gain off the left side and you do hear the band you do hear some fans it's 25 percent capacity here at Apogee Stadium around 8,000 fans allowed into the beautiful facility here Abraham play fake dumps it to the tight end and a good pickup Grayson Gunter the Arkansas transfer who had a, a rough week last week picks up eight to set up a third and two yeah they're looking for some more production out of Gunter the transfer from Arkansas I mean, big guy six foot five almost 250 pounds this guy can move 
I'd like to, for them to take a few shots at him up the seam when he's one on one with possibly a linebacker. Whistles on the field as Abraham got in under center at a timeout called by North Texas. A third North and two Texas. upcoming. Southern yeah, Miss second. going timeout. for the throat. Southern Miss has scored 17 straight and a big third and two coming up in the red zone against this depleted North Texas defense without about a half dozen regular contributors due to COVID tracing. They had their game last week canceled because their entire linebacking core was wiped out due to COVID-19 tracing. Two of five on third downs so far. On third and two, Jones in motion. They hand it off to Gore, and he's stopped short. No gain. It'll be fourth and two, and a great play by the leader of this defense once again, K.D. Davis. This is no surprise, Chris. They missed him big time last week. K.D. Davis, just a tackling machine. He's fast. He's physical. He can definitely go sideline to sideline. And you watch this right up the gut. Great collision. Great instincts to read that early and meet him right at the line of scrimmage. So it's a 34 yard attempt. Briggs Bourgeois made from 31 earlier, but he pushes this one way right. Never had a chance. That was like AJ's tee shot on the first hole at the country club. Straight block slice. Hey, it's either going to be in the right woods or the left woods. <laughs> so, hey. But you know what, Chris? That's an absolute victory for this North Texas team. Are you kidding me? To hold them to no points there, force a missed field goal. It seems like North Texas, at least on the sideline with their coaching staff and the players, they seem like they have a renewed sense of energy. Let's see if they can find a way to have it translate into some points. They'll take over at the 20-yard line after the missed field goal. First and 10, 6-24 to play here in the first half. It's been Austin Awney, the 27-year-old quarterback the whole way so far. And finally, some running room on first down. DeAndre Torrey for six yards. They had been picking up one, two, three yards on first down. The majority of these runs will go back to the ground. Torrey picking his way for a first down. Seven more. Same play twice in a row, Chris. Big Cole Brown, the left tackle, pulling around, leading the way. Let's see if they come back to it a third time. Trips to the far side of the field. Torrey once again, the running back. Ani looking right, has a man wide open. It's caught, Darden. And he has something to say to Natron Brooks who slipped to the ground there as Darden went out of bounds after a pickup of seven. Jalen Darden, Chris, he's so smooth. I was watching him, he was coming out, they had the trips up to the right, it was a bunch formation, so three guys stacked right next to each other. And he just kind of moseyed out of it, read the coverage, sat down right before the sticks and forced the second short here for North Texas. Slick move by DeAndre Torrey. As we take a look at Darden's numbers, five this season to lead the country, and they had a game canceled last week. Twelve touchdown catches last season led Conference USA. He had three against this Southern Miss team. He the second most in North Texas history. Torrey on first down picks up five more. The ground game's starting to work now for this North Texas offense. Timeout, Southern Miss. And yeah, Southern Miss has to take a breather here. The game for 4.56. 4.46 to play here in the first. North Texas down 14, but driving. Thank you. Now there's Jair Shorter, the wide receiver for North Texas, injured on the opening drive of the game, and he will not return tonight. Got the crutches heading off the field with a left leg injury. Next week, we've got another double header as Stadium brings you Conference USA football. FAU got their first victory of the season in their first game of the season today over Charlotte, 21-17. So they take on this Southern Miss team at 4 Eastern. And our crew will be just outside of Nashville, Bowling Green, Kentucky, for Marshall and Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers, a narrow victory today against rival Middle Tennessee, 20-17. Pickup of two there. Nick Smith, so it sets up a third down and three.
Late stages here, first half. North Texas kicked a field goal on their opening drive, haven't scored since. But that'll be a first down. Tough running from Nick Smith, who has been great in practice lately, comes up with a big play. And we do have an injured Southern Miss player. That's Kristen Booth, true freshman from Oxford, Alabama. This uh, Southern Miss defense, they've been out there a lot. And North Texas has had the ball and just kind of ground and pound the whole way. And they're always faced with a third down and short. They've done a great job so far. I feel like it's just a matter of time before North Texas can break out of it. Around Conference USA last night, BYU, boy, they look good. 45-14 winners over Louisiana Tech. And then a bunch of close, low-scoring games today. UAB winning its 20th straight home game against UTSA, first loss of the season for the Roadrunners. Florida Atlantic and Willie Taggart's first game. Beating Charlotte in just their second game of the season. And Western Kentucky barely getting by Middle Tennessee. Going deep for Ogunmakin, and he can't haul it in. He was wide open, and he just couldn't adjust to that at the goal line. Yeah, this is a, it's a tough one, Chris. Ogun making he was open early in this route. You can see it, the separation that he has, a good three yards. Well, he, he started fading away, and he faded too far. It's like his momentum took him out of the play. Yeah, Ani, it's not his fault at all, though. That was a good ball. He didn't throw his receiver out of bounds. He gave him a chance, but he was fading away and falling back for some reason, out of bounds almost. Oh, but the Bill tight end will pick him up. That's Asher Aberling, uh, Aberding rather, who may have made that mistake on the recovered kickoff earlier in this game, where he let it sail over his head and Southern Miss recovered. First catch of his career. Asher Aberding. Third time's a charm for me getting his last name right. Sorry, kid. North Texas has to find a way to put some more points on the board. Obviously, you'll take what you can get, three points if they have to. If they're stopped, yeah, they'll, they'll take the points. But, man, they would no, love nothing more than to, to score a touchdown here, get this game to 17-10. Seems much more manageable. We promised offense. I don't want to be a liar. Darden makes the catch, but wrapped up quickly by Tyler Barnes. And he goes down. And now he's back up. And running back to the Southern Miss sideline, getting a signal from the head coach. And he will come off before the 12th play of this drive. Third down. You wonder if he maybe got a signal to go down and the signal was crossed. There's some gamesmanship going on, Chris. <laughs> I don't know. He said, no, nah, no, nah, we won't do it this time. It's man. tough to do. We're all right. Third down and six. And it's a draw play to Siggers. Inside the 10. Trey Siggers just darting behind these offensive linemen. You see Antarius Gray with the big pull. He pulls across the, the center and sets up Siggers, and Siggers runs behind his pass, meaning that guy. Southern Miss, they're second. It runs it 30 seconds. low, Timeout. and when you find a way to, when you come in contact with him, he has all of that 200 pounds force behind him. Watch the little pull around here, almost like a little mini misdirection as we can run it here. Block down, block down, pull. Get a little kick out, the linemen have everybody. Even at the second level, you see the big block on Maples there. Maples is able to recover and make a tackle, but not before Siggers gets the first down. 18 yards for Siggers. It was a great story last year. He was a safety, and they moved him to the running back position. And he, he probably would have run for 1,000 yards had he been able to stay healthy and play all 12 games. In 10 games, he went for 853 and six touchdowns. I'd say that's a, a heck of a transition, different position change. 13th play of the drive. Siggers up the middle, 
fighting his way to the one. They're going to run to the line and give him the ball again. You could tell he's hungry for this. He wants to get in the end zone. I bet Seth Luttrell wants him to have it too. Sigurds to Ani's right. Gets it up the middle. Did he get over? Yes, he did. Touchdown, North Texas. This is complimentary football, Chris. You saw the North Texas defense on the previous drive. They stand up. They force Southern Miss to have a field goal attempt. It's pushed wide right. We felt like, hey, this is an opportunity for North Texas. Can they capitalize? They find a way to put together a nice long drive, mix the run in with the pass, and Siggers punches it in to make this game 17 to 10. 14 plays, 80 yards in four minutes and 30 seconds, and the momentum of this game has clearly shifted to the side of the mean green with 154 to play here in the first half. And Trey Siggers, the bell cow on this drive. Trey Siggers was not going to be denied on this drive. Are you kidding me? He gets to sniff the end zone there, and you know, if he got another chance, he's going to find a way to get in as he drags Southern Miss defenders into the end zone. Hey, by the way, Siggers, congrats. Heck of a drive there. Now you get to cover this kickoff. <laughs> well, the team's so shorthanded with more than a half dozen players still away from the team in quarantine due to contact tracing. Three carries for 27 yards and a touchdown on that drive for Siggers. The first drive where the running game really made some hay for the Mean Green. And this kick will go through the end zone. One timeout left for Southern Miss. 154 to play. You're up seven. What's your plan if you're Scotty Walden? If I'm Scotty Walton, I'm not taking my foot off the gas. This offense has found a way at times, yes, through a lot of North Texas miscues, but they've found a way to get 17 points on the board. I think you need to do whatever you can if you're Southern Miss to try to squash this momentum that North Texas has taken. You can feel on the sidelines of North Texas, they feel like, okay, we're back in it. We took their best shot that Southern Miss has, and we're still fighting. We're only down seven right now. Southern Miss wants to get some points on the board before half to try to silence them. Design draw play, and it works out pretty well. Pickup of eight for Abraham, and out of bounds to stop the clock. Obviously, for Jack Abraham, you don't want to take a sack here. Turnover would be catastrophic for this Southern Miss offense right now. On second and two, they hand it off. Gore short of the first down, so the clock will continue to run. I, th I think, Chris, because Southern Miss gets the ball to start the second half, I think that gives you even more reason to try to pour it on here and try to get some more points before you go into half. The old double whammy. Yep. Two for six on third down so far. It's third and one. Abraham going down the sideline for Brownlee, and he catches it. Dropped it in a bucket for Brownlee. Upton Stout was on the coverage for North Texas here. Upton Stout, five foot nine. Jason Brownlee, six foot three. Nice ball by Jack Abraham to put it up there to where Brownlee can elevate. Didn't even really have to, actually. He just threw it so nice right towards the sideline, but gave Brownlee enough room to catch that thing and convert. And flags on the field before that snap. Ball start, offense, number 60. Five-yard penalty remains, first down. It's on the right guard, Coker Wright. And look at this catch for 25 yards. That's just a heck of a throw by Abraham. He saw where Stout was in, in the coverage. He wasn't exactly in his hip pocket, but he had pretty good coverage. So Abraham leads Brownlee a little bit away from the defender, throws him open, but doesn't throw it too far to where it's out of bounds and you have no chance. It's the first penalty on Southern Miss tonight. First and 15 for Abraham, who's 8 of 13 for a buck 10 and a touchdown. 1.13 to go and one timeout for the Golden Eagles. 
And that pass was hurried a little bit. He had Narcus Driver over the middle, but he also had big old 97 Dion Noville right in his grill. And I think that caused a wayward throw. Yes, I would say so, Chris. Look at this shot right here. As he's bearing down on you, you're Abraham. You know you're going to eat that shot. He gets rid of it, but he still absorbs a heck of a hit. Dion Noville getting after the QB. The big man can move. The senior from Abilene has made a couple of nice plays tonight. I think he's got the message from the coaching staff to step it up. Frank Gore the call, and he's inside the 40, still on his feet to the 30-yard line. Now there is a ball out. And they will call it a fumble. One official is marking it at the 25 as a recovery for North Texas. Another one is still conversing with that official. We don't have an official call as of yet. The officials are talking about it, but Southern Miss trying to get down on the ball and snap it. I think he was probably down, though, Chris. I, I thought watching live that he was down, but the whistle didn't blow. And the officials were going to mark it where North Texas recovered. The rule on the field was the runner was down. Uh, <laughs> Dion Noville says, review that stuff. Here we go. We got a great look at it right here. Oh, my goodness. That is a clinic tape of how you attack the ball. Ooh, I think boy. that is. The, but that the ball was close. already out. So that right knee is down. But that ball, he does not have possession of the ball at that moment. We were going to have to see what the officials think of that. Now keep in mind the ruling on the field is that his knee was down so this needs to be conclusive evidence when they review it. Upton Stout just a heck of a job of getting the point of that football and ripping away at it. And let's see if he got it in time. I think that ball is possibly out Chris. Let's see. Again. Look that ball is out I right there. So yeah. too. I, I, I think, think that's a fumble. He was losing control of it. The punch came and he started losing control before those knees went down and this should be overturned. I learned last week I'm not going against what AJ sees on reviews because he's right. Stout just grabs the tip of that ball. Yes, the knee is down there, but the ball is already out of his possession. You can't say he has complete control of that ball when the knee is down. So it was ruled on the field. What did the referees end up ruling, Chris? They ruled him down. They ruled Time him down. Out. Okay. North Texas. They're challenging the rule of play of the runner's knee down. The previous play is under review. Well, if they use our great stadium camera work, they're going to be able to see that the ball was indeed coming out before Frank Gore's knee was down. Those are some great looks at it. They're waiting, Seth Luttrell is anyway, for North Texas to play it on the Jumbotron. They have not done that yet. But we believe here in the booth with our great looks that that ball was on its way out before Gore's knee hit and they're finally showing it on the Jumbotron not the greatest angle that we have and Seth Luttrell he says oh, that's enough for me that was out yeah Chris I think he lost possession a split second before his right knee hit the ground Okay, here we go. Zoom in. I'm going to tell you when to freeze it right, right now. Right there, the ball's out. Freeze it. That ball is, you can't say he has possession, and there is no nothing on the ground for Frank Gore. I think this is overturned. This is a fumble. I'm with you. And if yes. it's not overturned, it's not the right call, but I think they're going to make the right call here. And that's going to be a fumble for Frank Gore, who's had some issues with laterals, not necessarily fumbles. Now, that was a great run, second effort. He's had his best game as a collegiate athlete. But that was just a great defensive play. I mean, exactly. sometimes this is not something to put on. Uh, yes, of course, the running back never wants to fumble. But I would more lean towards the amazing play made by Upton Stout here than Frank Gore making a mistake. Yes, of course, he shouldn't fumble the ball. If your hands are on it, you need to keep, keep a hold of it. But this was just an absolute clinic tape from Upton Stout. They will show this to high schoolers, college players all around the country on how to attack the tip of the football and rip at it as you're going down. They hadn't forced any turnovers yet this season. This should be the first as we get Back the ball. 
The rule on the field has been confirmed. Wow. The runners need down is down before the fumble. Please reset the game clock to 103. Be first down. The ball will start on the snap. Well, I mean, we had such great looks at it that I can definitively say, without a shadow of a doubt, that's the wrong call. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, that Patrell, ball was out. Seth Patrell has to be beside himself on the, on the sidelines here. And I don't know. Maybe they didn't have the great look that we did. The slow mo, the zoom in. They must not have seen Tell the turn on the TV evidence. copy. Tell the replay booth to turn on the TV copy. We'll be good. Boy, that's a big call in this game. As that pass gets batted away by Quinn Whitlock, intended for Antoine Robinson. They are counting on Quinn Whitlock here for this North Texas secondary. He, he makes a big play right there. If Tim Jones was going to be in the lineup for Southern Miss tonight, he most likely would have gone against Quinn Whitlock most of the night. I know Whitlock, opportunistic DB, wants to jump out there and try to make a big play. Abraham to throw again. Oh, almost intercepted. Boy, they had a break on that one. Upton Stout broke on that. Southern Miss without their great wide receiver, Tim Jones, who heading into last week led the nation in receiving yards a game at 150, but missing his second straight game with a hamstring pull. They're also without their starting center, Trace Clopton. So Jack Abraham without the guy who snaps it to him and without the guy that he normally throws it to. Third and ten. Three-man rush over the middle. That pass was deflected and almost picked off. Mikhail Sanders had it in his hands. Mm. That's a tough one. It looks like he saw it right at the last second. The referee is right in the mix with everybody. Comes away unscathed, but who knows if anyone saw that referee stand there, didn't want to run into him. I mean, hey, North Texas, hey, the defense steps up again and forces another field goal attempt. Briggs Bourgeois, who missed badly on his last attempt from 36 yards, this one from 46 yards. And he ironed out that trouble from a bad slice to a draw just inside the upright. And that gives Southern Miss a 10 point lead with 44 seconds left in the first half. And perhaps a gift of three points. After that review that we think went the wrong way. Tons of miscues in this game for North Texas. It started on the opening drive. Jalen Garden dropped what should have been a touchdown. Greg White, same drive. It's a diving play, but should have caught it. And then off a Southern Miss touchdown, they recovered the kick. Austin Ani has had issues. He's fumbled it not once, but twice. And then North Texas is minus five in the turnover margin so far this season. Austin Ogan making drifted too far away from what should have been a touchdown there. But Seth Luttrell's team only down 10 and has to be feeling pretty good with what he's seen from his defense, which really has its sea legs under it now. Yeah, and their defense was the biggest question coming into this game. You know it's probably just a matter of time before the offense gets, thing going, gets it going in the right direction. If I'm Seth Luttrell at halftime, I'm telling my team, hey, guys, we've made every possible mistake we can pretty much make, and we're still only down 10 points right now. Maybe 10. We'll see if they get anything on the board with 44 seconds to go. But, no you've taken, outs, but you've taken your best shot from Southern Miss. You've had unbelievable mistakes that you normally shouldn't make, and you're still only down 10 points. That should be somewhat reassuring for North Texas. 44 seconds, no timeouts. Bonnie, 27 years old, so hopefully he's a vet. Not going to make a mistake if you try to move it down the field. It looks like they will try to do that. They have three wide receivers, a couple of them split way wide down here to the bottom part of the screen. Play action, Ani takes the yardage and gets a lot of yardage. Deontay Simpson on the edge of field goal range to the 42 yard line. 26 yard pickup. That'll change your play calling. If you're Seth Latrone, you can pick up 26 on the first play of this drive. 
Now you're in your opponent's territory and you're thinking about getting seven. And fires to Darden. That is not a catch he should have made because the clock's going to run 25 seconds. Very minimal yardage pickup of four. And with no timeouts, they got to spike it with 18 seconds left in a third and five upcoming. That's one where you just you wish Darden would have just dropped the football. Yeah, it's tough to tell a, a receiver to drop it, but yeah, I mean, I would think you don't really want to have many routes, like in breaking routes, when you have no timeouts left and you have no way of stopping the clock other than to get out of bounds. So third and five. Ani setting up and has a man complete. That's White. Stays inbounds, but the clock stops with the first down. Or it should have. It hasn't stopped yet. The clock's down to five seconds. Now that's, they're going to have to blow the whistle here and put time back on the clock because it never stopped for a first down. So they're missed trying to run to the, the uh, locker room right now. Yeah, they'll be needing to come back though because there were 10 seconds the, left. The half is not over. Please stay in the stadium. The half is not over. Yeah, they should put about 10 seconds on the clock. White makes the catch, tries to get out of bounds, can't do it. And you see the official winding it because he stayed in bounds. It's the correct signal. But then they should go to the stop the clock signal because it's a first down. Hey, you'd think there'd probably be at least 11 or 12 seconds put back on this clock. Could turn out to be a good thing for North Texas that they did make this mistake. It gives them some more time. I think you're right. Please reset the game clock to 11 seconds. Gives them the time to think of the perfect bounds. play. The clock stops for the first down. Once we mark the ball ready for play, the clock is supposed to start. The clock now will start on the ready for play. Yeah, that definitely Thank hurts you. Southern Miss. You got to get a first down or get out of bounds right away here if you're North Texas. Or do you just spike it? Might I'd as run well a run a play. If you're up here and you've had this you much to go. Southern Miss. You definitely Step run a play final. now. A one minute timeout. And that's interesting because now the clock won't start at the ready for play. Now, if Southern Miss had not called that timeout, the clock would wind before the snap, and, and North Texas would have to snap it right away. Now they don't have to do that. Yeah, maybe Southern Miss was a, a bit out of sorts because 75% of their team started running to the locker room to try to sway the refs into ending the half. All right, if you're if you're set the trail in North Texas, you have 11 seconds. Do you have to go to the end zone here? I would at least want to take one shot to the end zone where I felt comfortable to where it's a ball that hopefully only my receiver could go up and get. And if you don't get it, you have time to run your field goal unit out there and try to get three. Problem is, I mean, if you complete a pass for a first down, let's say the clock stops at six seconds, do you have enough time to run the field goal unit out? I don't know that you do. It's going to be tough. Yeah, that's why I mean, I, I could see them taking a shot at the end zone right here. Jalen Darden right here in the slot. Obviously a guy you want to keep your eyes on. You can see Southern Miss giving them some cushion because they know there's a good chance they're going to try to take a shot at the end zone. But if you can make them throw it and you can break up and get a tackle inbounds half over. Oni rolling out. Will throw to the end zone. Back shoulder incomplete for Darden. And no flag. So six seconds and now you think they have to run the field goal unit out. And here they come. Put Darden in motion. Little wheel route. You'll see Natron Brooks on the coverage. Man, heck of a play by Natron Brooks. They tried to back shoulder it. Brooks felt it, turns back inside, and finds a way to break that up and force a field goal attempt here. He found a way. I think he even found a way to grab his face mask and drag down the receiver after the incompletion as well. 40 yard attempt for Ethan Mooney to make it a seven point game, and that one is blocked. And Harrell comes up with it. 
Clock hits double zeros, and that'll end the first half. Look at Scotty Walden. You'd think they just won the conference. Love the enthusiasm. And boy, he's got to love the way his team came to play in this first half. That's Hemby, Kyle Hemby, the great cornerback, came right through, blocked it, and Harrell recovered it. Southern Miss, after getting blown out last week, with a 10-point lead at the half. Here's the old Mean Joe statue. The Mean Green trailing Southern Miss 20 to 10. His grandson's on the team, by the way. Some cool stuff. Evan Green is a wide receiver. He expects to play more as his years go on here. Just a, a youngster, but his grandfather started this program. That's why they're called the Mean Green. And here's the quarterback comparison tonight. Quite frankly, AJ, I thought we'd We'd see more eye-popping numbers so far. Yeah, you would for, for Austin Ani. He definitely should have over 200 yards passing and a few touchdowns, you would think, with some of the drops he had early in the first half. But, yeah, just some uh, somewhat efficient QB play. Neither one has, uh, has threw an interception yet, and let's see if they can keep that streak alive for the second half. Mean Green have gone back to kind of a throwback look this season with their jerseys. There's a look at on an old, the old Mean Joe Green uniform. North Texas has some slick uniforms, no question about it. We are the North Texas offensive leaders. Austin Ani has played the whole way so far for North Texas. No Jason Bean as of yet. DeAndre Torrey leading the way in rushing. And Deontay Simpson, three catches for 65 yards. As for Southern Miss, Frank Gore Jr., 64 yards and a touchdown. DeMarcus Jones has a touchdown catch as well. But Gore had that would-be fumble that Remus Kazika, the replay official, did not overturn. We thought for sure the ball was out. And A.J., you had a bit of an awkward run-in with him in the restroom at halftime. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I just wanted to, to get some clarification on the, uh, the fumble. And Excuse me, sir. Yeah, they, it was at the sink, to be honest, though, Chris. I, 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 let people, <laughs> I don't want to interrupt, but uh, we were washing our hands, as everyone is in the COVID era. And, yeah, the, he actually, you know what? He sold it pretty hard that he felt like the knee was down. I still doesn't change my mind, but, hey, that's what they saw. He's sticking to the story. Well, I'm glad we got at least some clarification. That ended up resulting in a field goal for Southern Miss. That's why they have a two possession lead here to start this second half. From the 25 yard line, Jack Abraham in this Southern Miss offense. He's without his starting center, Trace Clopton, and his number one receiver, Tim Jones, but still managed to put up 20 points in the first half. Mostly in part to some great starting field position on some of the miscues from North Texas. But this defense has looked a lot better the last five drives or so. Abraham to throw on first down has Robinson and he picks up seven. If you're just joining us, North Texas's defense is without five or six regular contributors due to COVID-19 contact tracing. We had last week's game at Houston canceled. They're happy to be out there on the field and they've got to be happy with the way some of these young guys have stepped up so far. Yeah, they really have. I mean, holding Southern Miss to 20 points, yeah, it doesn't seem like that's a great half, but the position that they were put in multiple times over and over with short fields, they had to, to defend 30 yards before a touchdown, and they, they found a way. Oh, big old hit on Robinson. A loss of one. Deshaun Gaddy lost his lid. Check out this hit. Deshaun Gaddy and KD Davis both get there at the same time. They're trying to set the tone, set a message. You know what, Chris? When these teams were running into half to the locker rooms at halftime, there was some jawing going back and forth as they were all heading in. 
Looks like they've uh, they've carried some of that over through the break. They fake the jet sweep. Abraham going deep, man wide open. Brownlee is home free. 68 yards and a blown coverage on the backside. Just a breakdown in, in coverage here for North Texas. Credit to Jack Abraham. As he's rolling out, he's trying to hit his tight end in the flat. North Texas does a heck of a job of picking it up. That doesn't give him the easy first down, but you know what? You take the easy one away and you give up the big one over the top for the touchdown. And now Southern Miss opens up a 17 point lead. Big play, Jason Brownlee. Jason Brownlee, look at him. He's up here at the top of the screen, right above the hash. And we know he is a premier player, and you see right off the bat some miscommunication down there from Quinn Whitlock, who was on him at the snap. Thought he was going to pass him off to somebody else right here. Man, Cam Johnson runs into him. It looks like some miscommunication to where they thought they were going to pass the receivers off. See, he wants to hit driver right there in front of him. And then he realizes this is too good to be true. Watch him turn around here and say something to the sideline for North Texas. That has to feel good. You're, you're thinking of when he's rolling out, okay, let's hope I can hit driver my tight end for an easy five yard completion. Let's keep the sticks moving. And then all of a sudden, you see he's covered and you look up and your star receiver is running unabated with nobody around him. So that right there, that's a tough throw, man. Chris, imagine if you're how excited you get when you see that. Oh, man. How to not overthrow him, just make a nice solid throw and get the touchdown. Another short kick and a fair catch by Jason Pirtle at the 31-yard line. Jason Brownlee had an 88-yard touchdown last week. This one good for 68. Let's see what North Texas was trying to do here. Is that all 11 guys close to the box there? Pretty much as they match up, that's just what wow. you can't have happen really ever, especially on third down and when it's their top receiver for the night with Tim Jones out of the lineup. you got to have an eye on where he is, especially on third down. And now you need a response from the offense. Trey Siggers, five yards on first down. It just makes it that much tougher for North Texas to get back in this one. You felt like they had some momentum coming out of the half and that just sucked the wind out of him. Siggers again this time only a yard so third down and four quickly on this opening drive of the second half for Seth Luttrell's offense. They are nine of 14 on third downs tonight so they've been successful more times than not. On E. Completes it. No, incomplete. Are they saying incomplete now? No, nope, move the sticks. That was, a, that was a Southern Miss player that was saying incomplete. Greg White made the catch. It's hard to see if that ball hit the turf or not. They're certainly not going to wait around for the replay crew to look at that. Darden gets the swing pass, but can't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Kyle Hemby had that red. Hey, Chris, had a big night. I hate to step on you there, but yeah. let's see if they're going to come back to that play. You saw Darden step, catch that behind the line. Of I was wondering if he was going to throw that. He's a high, he played quarterback in high school for a little while as well. So let's see if they're setting that up, possibly to let him have a double pass there later in the game. Bonnie throwing far side. That's complete near the sticks. Greg White, big old stiff arm. And Moody goes down. Beg your pardon, that's Brooks. Natron Brooks. A left-handed stiff arm. This is what you love to see if you're Seth Luttrell and the North Texas coaching staff. Dances a little bit, finds a way to get the first down, and then sends the message on their sideline as well. I'd like to see him take a shot down the field to Greg White, Chris. Big six foot three receiver. I think you need to try to have an explosive game. Well, they did try it on the opening drive. That was one of those touchdown drops, but maybe go back to him as they take a look at Dominic Quiwan. You know, we have two full moons this month. But you don't care about that. You care about football. That's why you're watching. 
Stadium's important. coverage of Conference USA football here. That's A.J. Hawk. I'm Chris Hassel. This is early third quarter action. North Texas has the football down by 17, though. And I feel like a must-score drive at this point for North Texas. It would seem to be that way. It definitely feels like that. You just don't want to get too far behind. And we know North Texas, they do not specialize in playing from behind. They like to jump out to an early lead and try to run away with it. They do not like coming from behind. Zach Portlock with a big hit on Trey Siggers there. Setting up another third down. 10 of 15 on third down are the North Texas Mean Green. Got to put it in the air. Ani going long. That's Hogan making. And again, they go deep and they don't convert. Cameron Harrell on the coverage. It, it looks kind of awkward just because of how Ogan Macon kind of contorted his body and fell trying to catch it, but now I think that's a good no call there. And it looks like North Texas is going to go for it here. At the 44 yard line of Southern Miss, down 17. Pressure up the middle. Good pickup. Darden got it. First down, Mean Green. It's pretty simple, Chris. When you need it on fourth down, on third down, key moment in the game, who do you look for? Jalen Darden. You can trust that he's going to win his one-on-one -on -one matchups and create some separation. Eighth catch of the game for 41 yards. Ani goes to the first down sticks and Deontay Simpson. That'll be a first down pickup of 11. So now the rhythm returning to this North Texas offense through the air. Well, look for him to keep it on the ground here. Timeout called by Southern Miss. 9.52 to go here in the third Miss. and a 27 lead for Southern Miss. And a day that's seen some real tight games in Conference USA play. The favorites have come out on top in all of them. We'll see what happens here. North Texas, a slight favorite. Outside of Conference USA, TCU knocks off Texas. A fumble at the goal line by the Longhorns in the final minutes. Doom. Texas in that one. TCU has owned Texas of late. Kyle Trask and that Florida offense, they look great. Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin with an overtime win at Kentucky and Georgia all over Auburn in the third quarter. Some good football being played, Chris. Some, some fun, exciting games we got to watch during the day today. Lane Kiffin getting a win. It's got to feel good. Yeah, especially after your in-state rival Mississippi State got that huge win last week. Uh, Ole Miss did not look good, but they come back with a victory today. Mississippi State struggling with Arkansas right now. Torrey gets the handoff on first down. Picks up two. It's been all Austin Ani. They've gone with two quarterbacks in both games before this, but no Jason Bean as of yet. Ani over the middle. Touchdown, Jalen Darden. 17 yards. And North Texas with a quick response. He's obviously very, very excited. Jalen Darden, business as usual. He's ready to get back out there and get another crack at it. The connection these guys have. I mean, Jalen Darden just gives his quarterback so many opportunities. Finds a way to, to get to the void in the coverage. Extra point makes it a 10-point game. 9.23 to go. North Texas within 10. Jalen Darden, he is a truly a special, special talent. This guy does it all as we see him cruise to the sideline. 27-17, Southern Miss. Jalen Darden with his sixth touchdown catch of the season, and North Texas is within 10. 9.23 to go here in the third quarter. And we take a look at our fan of the game. Whoa, -ho. that's a guy that's lifted a few weights. Looks like it could be 
related to AJ Hawk, perhaps. Might be. Is that a Superman tag? No. no. I don't know what that is. I'm a no barbed wire tag. I can tell you that. <laughs> I don't know what that is. I won't. I shouldn't have speculated. I like the chain that his buddy's wearing too. Say it to his face, AJ. <laughs> Uh, Darden now once again tied for the FBS lead in touchdown receptions with six. Florida tight end Kyle Pitts also with six. And the boot is into the end zone and a fair catch coming out to the 25 yard line. Fitting our players to watch. Well, they both scored touchdowns. Jason Brownlee just had a 68 yarder on third and short. Jalen Darden. Just had a great drive where he caught a pass on fourth and long to keep the drive alive and then scored the touchdown. Jalen Darden's a, a huge reason on why they've been able to keep the chains moving. Third down, fourth down, whenever you need him, you can count on him. He's a guy that they love around here. Does everything the right way, holds young guys accountable. When you can have your star receiver be that guy and be that leader that kind of leads by example and will take guys under his wing, it has a huge trickle down effect on everybody at that position. You don't hear about that too often in the NFL. A star receiver leading the football team. You don't or even leading the room. So I play with a guy named Jordy Nelson and Jordy Nelson was so such so beneficial for that receiver room in Green Bay for so many years because once the guys like Donald Driver and Greg Jennings got out of weren't there anymore. Jordy was the main go to target and he was the most selfless hard working guy that would never complain about not getting a ball and you know what all those other receivers all those young guys that are watching and learning they realize hey we can't be like that either. Second and seven Abraham had some trouble with the snap but still completes it and converts the first down to Robinson. Antoine Robinson 16 yards as he got the corner turn. Antoine Robinson just sitting down. He comes back to the ball, which is what quarterbacks love to see. Always come back to the ball to prevent defender from jumping in front and getting an interception. Scotty Walden was telling us this week they think they signed the best two junior college wide receivers in the state of Mississippi this year in Antoine Robinson and the aforementioned Jason Brownlee. They are both <laughs> physically gifted. They can absolutely flat out play. And as you see, this is a quick strike offense. Abraham incomplete. No flags. It's been a pretty clean game to this point. Cam Johnson on the coverage there. He was a part of that blown coverage. The last drive that resulted in the 68 yard touchdown. That's the thing when you're especially in third down teams are going to match up a lot of their coverage. If there is one communication error to where say one player thinks you're passing it off the other guy thinks we're sticking with it. That's what happens explosive gains. And that's a tough drop Robinson had that it would have been a pickup of six. And set up a third and short instead it's third and ten. feel like another moment for North Texas now we, we felt like the North Texas offense last drive needed to do something needed to score a touchdown right now on third and ten you feel like this North Texas defense has to find a way to hold up here and force a punt the rare four down lineman look for this North Texas D they can't get to him but they get an interception Mikhail Sanders juggled it and corralled it First down, North Texas. And they finally get a turnover. Mikhail Sanders, here we go. Jack Abraham thinks he has an open window here. You see Sanders underneath in coverage as Cam Johnson is over the top of Willis. Maybe a little bit of a bobble at first, but he comes down with that and gets the elusive turnover that North Texas has been looking for all season. First one of the season. They only had four interceptions all of last season after 18 of them back in 2018. Chris you know what they tell you about uh, interceptions and turnovers What's that they come in bunches. Oh boy. Mean Green fans hope that's the case. Darden oh, can't hold on. That was maybe a little short arm to him. He had to go down to the turf to try to grab it. 
And it would have been a pickup of 10 at least had he stayed on his feet. Jason Bean still has not played in this game. Now the backup quarterback to Austin Ani. And nothing doing on second long, so it's third and 10 now. Here we go, another opportunity for North Texas, third and 10. You wonder if they're able to pick up six or seven here. Is this four down territory? They picked up a fourth and long last drive. They hope to not have to do it this drive. Ani flushed out, eyes downfield, and fires it into the turf just in front of Greg White. Uh-oh. A slap at the helmet, but no flag. He's lucky he didn't get on sportsmanlike conduct there. There was some chirping going on. Hey, watch Taj Sykes here. Just watch his pursuit. So Ani starts running. You think for a second, oh, maybe he has enough, uh, enough ground to, to run for this first down. No, Taj Sykes is moving and making sure that if Ani thought about pulling that one down and trying to get the 10 yards, that he was going to make him pay. And he forces him to throw this ball away. And now the punt from Bernardo Rodriguez. Line drive, it'll bounce and roll inside the 10. Dangerous play. Let's see who has it. North Texas is saying they have it. But Southern Miss able to save it at the two yard line after a 57 yard punt. Roll the field. Ball is covered by Southern Miss. First down. Demarcus Jones made a grave mistake, and he barely hung on to it. Point lead for Southern Miss. There is juice in the building, as they say. Some chirping going on between these two teams before the half, and here in the second half. Greg White and Kalen Leonard getting into it, and I'm surprised White didn't get an unsportsmanlike for that. Yeah, they always tell you, if you retaliate, retaliate you're the one that, that gets caught. And there's a no call there from the referees. A good blocking off the left side of that line. So Frank Gore Jr. gives him some breathing room. Pickup of five. Scored his first touchdown early on in this game. First of many, I would believe, for Southern Miss. Just a true freshman. They love everything he does. Gets the handoff again, skips through, first down and then some. Ten yard pickup, they're liking that left side. Yeah, you would think Southern Miss is going to try to slow the game down a little bit. They have a ten point lead right now, six minutes to go in the third quarter. Slow it down a little bit, be more deliberate. Mix a lot of run in with some passing. Try to keep the clock moving and try to keep control of this ball and have a nice sustained drive here. I formation again, just one wide receiver. Gore, the handoff again, left side. This is like a, a Madden player who's found the right play. Just keeps running it three straight times. Hey, yeah, I know, you know coaches like that. Hey, we're going to run it until they, make, they stop it. And there's. Frank Gore Jr. when he was in high school with his dad, who was then a member of the Miami Dolphins. He said, my dad taught me a lot about carrying myself and being accountable and being a good teammate and respecting everyone. Scotty Walden said, you just, you don't find true freshmen like this. And he's not talking about the way he plays on the field, his talent. He's talking about the way he carries himself. Well, his dad is one of the most respected NFL players ever to play, so. You talk to any player in the league, they have the ultimate around, amount of respect for Frank Gore. His, anyone that has played with him says the same. A flag before the snap there. False start, offense, number 70. Five yard penalty, remains second down. Just the second penalty on Southern Miss. This hurts, they're now behind the chains. Deep in their own territory at the 15 yard line. Penalties like that can derail a drive. 
Scotty Walden. Oh, he's got a get back, man. Oh, that's the strength coach. I was in the workout room this morning, and the, the strength coach was pacing outside, waiting for me to be done. It's a 45 minute limit, one person in the room at, at a time. And the strength coach for Southern Miss was ready to get in. I, I, I ended my workout a little bit early so we could get a few more curls in. It's probably a smart move, Chris. All right, third down and eight. Big play here. North Texas has momentum on offense. They've been able to find the end zone. But Southern Miss wants to work this clock and keep it a two score game. They send four. Abraham completes it, and forward progress should give him the first down. It does. Brandon Hayes makes the catch, and Abraham just didn't get any pressure in his face. Four man rush here by North Texas. Heck of a job by the Southern Miss offensive line. Holding up, giving him plenty of time to throw. Tayshawn Johnson kind of wraps around late to get a little bit of pressure on Abraham, but it's too late. Those late developing routes down the field were able to, to come free, and they pick up another first down. They're working the play clock down. It's all the way down to two, one. Just get the snap off. And the handoff to Darius. Mayberry just two yards there Southern Miss started the season with three games at home and if you know the history of Southern Miss football they don't lose three games in a row at home that just doesn't happen well it happened this season they lost to South Alabama in the opener and upset Jay Hobson stepped down as head coach so Scotty Walden stepped in 30 years old interim head coach the youngest in the nation. They lost to Texas, uh, Louisiana Tech on a last second touchdown and they got blown out last week by Tulane. The losing streak goes all the way back almost a year. Six consecutive defeats for Southern Miss after they started last season seven and three. This has become the game right now as we see another North Texas uh, defender. Looks like he's a bit hobbly. That's Tayshawn Johnson, the true freshman from Killeen. One of the true freshmen that's been forced into action because of COVID-19 tracing. And all the players that are still in quarantine because of the 14-day minimum window. That's why they weren't able to play last week because the linebacking core was completely wiped out. But they were able to get a couple of guys back, including KD Davis, who did not play in that SMU game, and that's one of the reasons why he's able to come back. He didn't have to do the COVID-19 contact tracing quarantine because he wasn't around anyone during that game against SMU who did test positive. Scotty Walden, native of Texas, grew up 70 miles from here. He coached in East Texas. He played in West Texas. Said he couldn't wait to get back home. Most importantly, for a change of scenery for his players. They were ready to get out of Hattiesburg, even though they love playing at the Rock. He thought that this might be just what they needed. So far, so good. Abraham rolls out of it. Jump pass and he throws it out of bounds. I think he could have run for that first down, could he not? He was trying, but I, I think KD Davis was honestly, he was covering the tight end over there by the sideline and keeping an eye on him. He wasn't going to let his tight end go, but he had an eye on Jack Abraham, and he did try to pull it down and get that first. But that's what this game is going to turn into for North Texas' defense. Southern Miss is going to be somewhat conservative early on, first and second down. Try to maybe run the ball, maybe some misdirection, quick passing. But it's going to come down to third down. Can your defense stand up like they just did on third down? Can they do that the rest of this night until you get back in the game and ultimately try to win? Short kick. That may have hit a North Texas player. I think it did. 
Southern Miss, live ball. Looks like they're on it. I think it hit two North Texas players, Chris. And another terrible miscue on special teams for North Texas. The punt was touched by the receivers. Recovered by the kickers. First down, Southern Miss. And you always worry about this on really short kicks. Jalen Darden, the return man, he's, he's undoubtedly yelling, but he saw it hit one of his players, so he tried to recover it. He touched it himself, and Southern Miss recovers it. They already recovered a kickoff earlier in this game, and now a punt. And that's a backbreaker, that's AJ. brutal, brutal. He's trying to yell and tell his guys to get out of here. Jack Abraham went, presumably, to use the little boys' room because they were punting it away. And so he he's out for this play. Now he ran back just in time. Back. That's a real just life, in time. A real life issue, Chris. Yeah, that was that was a tape delay by like three seconds. He's out there. Taking the snap. Gore. Boy, he's tough to bring down, isn't he? And honestly, you know how deflated it is for a defense. So North Texas defense, they stand up, they get off the field on third down. Long play, too, where everyone's in coverage for five or six seconds. And then all of a sudden, you realize, hey, you, by the time you get to the bench and sit down and try to get your helmet off and get some water, they're calling defense back up. So North Texas, their backs are against it right now. Let's see if they can find a way to dig deep and, and make a stop right here. Or in the case of that man, he was on the way to the latrine. And back in the old days, they just used to go in their pants, didn't they? I think that happens a lot in present day, Chris. Depends on who you are. Guess maybe not, me. Maybe not if you're a quarterback. Not me, but I've, I've seen Hot as well. Frank Gore Jr. down to the five-yard line. First in goal, Southern Miss. What a run. <laughs> what a run here. Maybe taking advantage of uh, some of the fatigue from this North Texas defense. has been out there so much, but man, he runs so hard. You can tell he smells that end zone. He wants to get in there. Well, he's over 100 yards from scrimmage now. 94 rushing yards, eight receiving yards. Hand off to Mayberry. Hit behind the line, able to pick up one. Second and goal for the four. And that will likely be the final play of the third quarter. And the lead is still 10. Southern Miss, a big first quarter. And they take a double-digit lead into the fourth, looking for their first victory of the season. Six, seven, eight. Boom, bam, get it, get it. Bust it, bust it. Pump it up, pump it up. Boom, bam, kill it, kill it. Uh, uh. Pump it up, pump it up. Boom, bam, get it. Our moment of the game. Definitely not a moment for North Texas. The punt, which was short and hit North Texas, recovered by Southern Miss, was surprising for many, including the quarterback. Jack Abraham was headed to the restroom. The backup Tate Wadley had to come running down and say, hey, we've got the ball again. Abraham says, I'm coming, I'm coming. Maybe he was able to go to the restroom between quarters. Start of the fourth, second in goal for Southern Miss. Mayberry stretches it to the goal line. He's in, touchdown, Southern Miss. And this is off that muffed punt, if you can call it that. Four plays, 22 yards in two minutes. <laughs> and boy, they've got a lot of emotion on that Southern Miss sideline. Why not? Start of the season 0-3. Your head coach quit. You got embarrassed last week by Tulane, your rival. <laughs> Rule fails a touchdown. The previous play is under review. And they're going to look to see if Mayberry was able to stretch that ball over the goal line before any part of his body hit. 
And looks like he did. Great stretch. Yeah, Quinn, Quinn Whitlock, corner comes up off the edge to, to make this tackle. But yeah, it looks like he kept that right knee up long enough to get the ball over the end line. Good blocking up front, too, from Southern Miss. I don't see anything to overturn this. I'm but with hey, you. who knows? After that old, uh, the old call from Revis. They said Frank Gore's uh, knee was down earlier. You know I don't that, know what they're doing. That play, that call that was After not review, overturned. The play stands. Touchdown. The call that AJ was referencing, the Frank Gore fumble that was not overturned. We, we both thought it should have been a fumble recovered by North Texas. That resulted in a field goal. So, I mean, it's you're still looking at a two-possession game if that play was overturned, if that fumble was overturned. It wasn't. Southern Miss got a field goal, and with this extra point, it's now a three-possession game. North Texas scored first. They led 3-0, but then Southern Miss scored 17 straight. And they've had the lead ever since. Now that North Texas defense has played pretty well since the first quarter. But they've been put in some terrible situations. They did have the one blown coverage on the 68-yard touchdown pass on third and short. Outside of that, I think Seth Luttrell has to be pretty pleased with the way his defense has stepped up in the absence of those half dozen players or so who are quarantining. Absolutely. It's when you look at the scoreboard and you say, okay, they've given up 34 points and we're just starting the fourth quarter. But no, you got to take a look at how this game has played out through three quarters. We've mentioned the miscues from North Texas. They have put their defense in about as difficult of situations as you can in a game. And for the most part, they've stood up and they, yeah, you're down 34 17. But you've, they've kept them in the game. If this defense played like they did the first two weeks, yeah. this game would be completely over by now, I feel like. Fair catch at the 26. Southern Miss started inside the North Texas 30 at least three different times by my count, including the last drive after the botched punt return. This North Texas offense has its work cut out for it now. They've got to score, score in a hurry. They did score last drive behind Austin Pawnee. He's thrown for 205 and a touchdown. Pump fake going deep, looking for the quick strike. And again, they just can't connect. That one may be a little bit too much for Deontay Simpson. He had him too. Deontay Simpson created enough separation, but Ani just leads him a little too much on this. Just got to give your receiver a chance. Ani again going that way. It's caught. It's Austin Ogan making first down to the 41 yard line, 15 yard pickup. That's what's tough for North Texas when you fall behind by this much you, you pretty much have to abandon that run game. So the Southern Miss front four can try to find a way to pin their ears back and get after the quarterback. But you, you're running out of time if you're in North Texas. Again throwing and Darden has his 10th reception of the game. Guys like Jalen Darden. It's fun to watch him. You, you look at him and say, this guy's not that big. He's only 5'9", 175 pounds. But I don't see him take a whole lot. Like, he doesn't seem to take a bunch of punishment. Guys like Jalen Darden, you look at think a guy like Randall Cobb, different guys around the league in the NFL, they find a way to not absorb huge contacts. They can find a way to stay in the field and be healthy because there's an art to it. There really is of, of avoiding those massive shots that will take you out for games. Second down to 10 after the incompletion. Ani went through his progressions and had Jalen Darden. Could have been a pickup of five or six, but threw it just wide. He rolls out, has time. Again goes to the sideline over the head of Greg White. And it's third down. There was nobody open. Credit the Southern Miss defense. They're just a two-man route down here into the boundary. And they were both 
covered up. Southern Miss, heck of a job here. And probably four down territory, don't you think? If you want a chance to win, yeah. Third and ten, see what they can pick up here. They'll pick up all of it. Darden. Down at the 34-yard line, 11th catch, 83 yards, and a touchdown on the night. This is what Jalen Darden does so well. You see a little delayed release to kind of get a feel on what the coverage is going to be. And just sits down and converts another one. Bonnie looking to throw, and White never broke for the end zone. Bonnie wanted him to run to that pylon. Second and ten. Yeah, when a quarterback's scrambling, you'll hear uh, coaches say, hey, deep receivers come short, short receivers go deep. You try to create some space and give some kind of window to where your quarterback can fit something in. They will run it on second down and a big hole up the middle. DeAndre Torrey, touchdown Mean Green. They're not done yet. 34 yards. There you go. I feel like we've been looking for that spark from this North Texas offense all night. Maybe that will do enough. Their defense got a little bit of a breather during that series. North Texas is not going to go quietly. Eight plays, 74 yards in 243. And the extra point from Ethan Mooney. Ten-point game, still plenty of time to go. I mentioned earlier that they may have to abandon the run game. Absolutely not. Antarius Gray leads the way. DeAndre Torrey brings them within ten. A.J. Hawk's eye on the game. He's going to show us how DeAndre Torrey went untouched to the end zone. So, Chris, you want you hear coaches talk about numbers in the box. You look right here. Southern Miss has five defenders in the box and then oh by the way one two both of our safeties are wider than the hash they are way out there creates enough space five offensive linemen to block five defenders in the box deandre torrey has the wheels to outrun anybody else in the back end just a a beautiful sight for north texas in their offense longest run of the game 34 yards and it's a 10-point game again and once again they will Turn to the defense. They did come up with their first turnover of the season earlier in this half. They have at times made big stops. Special teams have really let them down. DeAndre Torrey with his 23rd career touchdown. Senior from Mississippi. Doesn't look too happy. He just had a heck of a run. <laughs> Bring some energy back in this place, but hey, he's focused on the next drive when he gets another chance. First and 10 for the 25 yard line, 13 11 to play in this game. Abraham looking to throw right away, and that one's complete. Brownlee, great catch. Caught it well away from his body and reeled it in for 12. And we've seen Southern Miss roll this play clock all the way down to one for much of this second half. Jack Abraham is the type of quarterback you want if you're sitting on a 10 point lead with 1240 left in the game because he's such an efficient and productive passer that he's usually not going to make those those bonehead mistakes that maybe sometimes a younger player may make. He understands the situation. He understands what this offense needs to do. He's not going to take unwarranted chances. The snap with two on the play clock. Frank Gore Jr. gets one, and that's it. That's another small detail, too, that it helps having a veteran quarterback. Taking the play clock all the way down to, to snap it around two, three, one second. A lot of times, if you have a guy that doesn't have as many reps, as a Jack Abraham, you just feel weird. Like he just, Right now, he's just standing on the field. When you're a football player, it feels awkward to stand there and not do anything and let the time run down. Sometimes other guys will snap it with eight, nine seconds to go when you should bring it down to two or one. Well, this snap does come with nine, but they'll pick up first down yardage. Frank Gore over 100 for the game, down to the 41-yard line of North Texas. 
The talk about Frank Gore having wisdom well beyond uh, that a normal freshman would have. Watch him at the very end here. He has the ability. He could have broken that outside and tried to get a couple more yards around the edge there, but no, he is smart. He knows he needs to stay in bounds there. He knows about the clock. He's watched his dad run the ball enough for years and years. He has that high football IQ, and he gets down, and this clock is running. And the best game of his young career, his first touchdown, his first 100-yard game. And he'll get the handoff on first. Up the middle for three. This is this, this spot in the field where a lot of offenses like to take a shot, especially on second down right here. Don't be surprised if you see Jack Abraham take a shot, maybe down here to his talented receiver in Brownlee. Brownlee has a 68-yard touchdown today after the 88-yard touchdown last week against Tulane. Again, the snap with one on the play clock, and Gore tripped up. Picks up three, third down and four. And there is an injured player for Southern Miss. They're already without their starting center, Trace Clopton. And that looks like Narcus Driver. This Southern Miss 0-1 in conference play. Third down and four, Southern Miss up 10 on the road. And close to a first down, but maybe just short is Don Ragsdale. And decision time for Scotty Walden. You'd think the way they've been running, that they'll try to pound this one over. Looks like it's about fourth and a half a yard left. And they're three for five on fourth down this season formation backfield huge play here the running back is Mayberry they're trying to draw him offside and it's not happening play clock winds down to zero and a timeout time was out. called Southern Miss their first the 30 second timeout all right now what do you do AJ do you send the offense back out there and try to get it I think you're kind of in no man's land right here where you are. I mean, even if you do kick a field goal and make it, two touchdowns still beat you. Yeah, that's why I think this this is something you go for. And you saw Jack Abraham. You saw the little shift. They're trying to get them to jump off sides of the North Texas defense. Once Jack Abraham got under center, I would assume you'd take that and try to run the QB sneak a la Tom Brady. You know, he seems to, to find a way to always fall forward and get that yard when you need it. Let's see if Jack Abraham can be that guy. And if North Texas could come up with a stop here, the offense is humming now in the second half. They're going to be tough to stop. But they haven't been able to cut this to a one possession game here in the second half. They went into halftime down 10 did North Texas and Southern Miss scored on the opening drive. And the offense coming back out onto the field. Darius Mabry the running back. That same formation they were using when they tried to draw him offside. Cole Cavallo's the tight end lined up at fullback. The handoff and a first down. John Davis of North Texas is trying to say, hey, spot him back here. He didn't get it, but certainly looks like he got it to me. Upton Stout comes up from his cornerback position and makes a tough tackle. It's just. Too much momentum there. And they do move the sticks. Not even close enough for a measurement, so more time going to be taken off the clock. Play clock under five once again. Play fake over the middle. Oh, that was dangerous. Deshaun Gaddy was there. And if that pass was on target, I think it would have been picked off. Gaddy's hurt. 
The pass is high. If that pass is on target, that, that could have been a pick six. But look at the left knee lock up on Gaddy. 8.31 to play, second and 10 upcoming as they try to stretch it out on Gaddy's leg. Sean Gaddy was able to run off the field under his own power, and Scrappy the Eagle is in better spirits. I believe that's the sprinkler. Isn't it? Something to that effect. I think so. Some form of a sprinkler, yeah. That's A.J. Hawk. I'm Chris Hassel. This is stadium's coverage of Conference USA football. Southern Miss up by 10. About eight minutes to go, and another big third down upcoming. It'll be third and six. The North Texas offense is humming. If they can get it back in a two-score game, they've got a chance. Another huge down, third down for this North Texas defense. Can they find a way to stand up and get another stop? They have to be exhausted. The 10th play of this drive. And we'll see if it's four down territory again. They just converted a fourth and one. Abraham looking to throw, stepping up. And he will run for it. And he'll get it. Another back breaking first down. And Abraham knows how big that was. He knew that one right there just took a little bit of life out of this North Texas defense. So difficult when you, you're towards the end of a 10, 11 play drive defensively. You know if you can get a stop, we possibly force a field goal attempt. The quarterback runs it and he gets just enough. It's just, it's tough mentally and physically to come back from that. Coming up on seven minutes to go and Mayberry is close to another first down. Pickup of nine. And at this point, North Texas has to hold Southern Miss to a field goal attempt. If this goes to a three possession game this late, it'll be virtually impossible. Twelfth play of the drive upcoming, and they have been milking the clock at every opportunity. Offensively, Southern Miss has really had great control of this game in the second half, I feel like. They've controlled the tempo, the pace, everything. Mayberry big hole. Cuts it up inside. Stiff arm. Touchdown. 14-yard score. And they're a PAT away from going up three scores real late. Twelve plays, 75 yards in six minutes and 55 seconds. Southern Miss, Darius Mayberry finds a way, dodging and ducking his way to the end zone. 41-24, Southern Miss. Southern Miss just punched it in again to go up 17 with 6.16 to play. Scotty Walden, the 30-year-old interim head coach, youngest in the country, with his pregame routine, he brings the energy. And boy, is this going to feel good if he comes back to his home state where he grew up playing, got his first coaching job, and begged for a job at North Texas four years ago and picks up his first win as a head coach. Wouldn't that be something? It would be pretty amazing. I wonder what Scotty's going to feel like when we get to have full stadiums again. This is how Scotty is with 25% capacity pregame. Imagine when the, the crowd really gets behind him. They're at a home game at Southern Miss. It's going to be special. Well, and you wonder how much different the feeling is among Southern Miss fans this week compared to how they felt last week, getting blown out by Tulane, 66 to 24. And then heading on the road as an underdog to play North Texas. What a performance today. and. 
It's really the defense that's turned things around. Sure, they got the, the running game going. Jack Abraham's had a good game, but defensively, they gave up 430 yards on the ground last week. And they really challenged them in practice. As you talked about, A.J., they tackled for 30 minutes in practice on Tuesday. So they did a little bit more tackling on Wednesday. They come out here. They play much better defensively. And I'm guessing every question these kids are going to have after the game is, Coach, are you going to make us tackle again this week? It worked. Are you going to make us do it again? Most likely, yes. That's the, that is the answer, Chris. Well, they've got FAU coming to town Saturday at 4 Eastern. And Stadium will have that coverage for you. Ani going deep, and that's complete. That is a rare long completion for North Texas in this game. They've tried this about eight times and finally convert 36 yards. Yeah, nice back shoulder ball here thrown by Ani. Finally able to connect and break White down the field. Let's see if they come back to it. Another play fake going to the end zone. Man wide open. It's Simpson. And that was quick. 37-yard score. And a chance to cut it to 10 again. And you're probably already thinking onside kick. 5.16 to go. You still have to score two more times. Yeah, you do have three timeouts left if you're North Texas. Man, let's take a second to admire the beautiful throw right there by Austin Ani. The route and the catch by Deontay Simpson. North Texas says, hey, not so fast. We're still in this thing. We have three timeouts left. Well, and that's why ten, AJ, ten point ball game, Chris. We, we both felt like if they could get that stop on defense, if they could get off the field, that, that they have a real chance because they can't be stopped right now. No question. You see the separation that Simpson creates. They're finally able to connect on one of these deep balls in the end zone. They've been trying to so much tonight. So when I threw the onside kick thing out there with 5.16 to go, I got the sense that you would say no at this point. I don't think with three timeouts and the ability to stop the clock offensively even without timeouts, I don't think it's something you do right now, but you never know. I would do it right now. With the trust that you have in your defense, probably, yeah, you might. As in zero? Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, they really, the defense has played I think better than, than most thought. I think the defenses look great, minus that last drive pretty much. Uh, on what they, they give up the touchdown there when they really, really needed a stop here. And it looks like they are setting up for the onsider, Chris. All right, see if they can get a bounce from Ethan Mooney. And they're waiting on the hop, they got it, but it's tipped out of bounds. Great play by Jason Brownlee, the wide receiver. It's really just that simple for the hands team. You can bat it out of bounds. You don't have to grab it. Heads up play here by Brownlee. That's why you put him there. The front line guys, you want blocking for the guys behind him like Brownlee that are there to either receive that ball or like you just saw, knock it out of bounds, not give them a chance. First down, Southern Miss. Had he not done that, Deion Hare Griffin was right there for the recovery. It's a good kick. That's what you want. You want that big bounce. You want to, you want to give your team a chance. And he did give him a chance with Brownlee with the heads-up play. So 5.16 to go. Southern Miss takes over at their own 47. And North Texas has to get off the field as quickly as possible. But they haven't been able to stop the run. Mayberry, who had the touchdown run last drive, picks up four on first down, and North Texas calls the first of three timeouts. If they can find timeout. a way to get North Texas, a three down here, Chris. It'll be a 30 second timeout. It could be huge for them. They're going to have to use their timeouts. You have to find a way to be very efficient offensively, trying to make up for the 10 point differential. But it starts right now. If they can't get a stop, they don't have a chance. Southern Miss feels a lot better about their rushing attack. They came into this game averaging 98 yards on the ground per game. In this one, they have a buck 96, so almost to 200 rushing yards. Frank Gore Jr. has 21 carries for 121 yards and a touchdown. Scotty Walden just needs 
couple of first downs to secure his first victory. And there's Frank Gore Jr. who hasn't been out there the last seven or eight snaps. It's been all Darius Mayberry. I wonder if Gore got banged up a little bit. Second and six after the timeout. Mayberry again, this time runs into a wall. John Davis first in on the tackle, helped out by a couple of teammates timeout, and then helped no up practice. by a teammate. They're second. It'll be a 30 second timeout. And a timeout ahead of another critical third down. What do you do if you're Southern Miss right here? Do you try to keep it on the ground? I do. I keep it on the ground, and if I pick up two or three, I'll go for it. Yeah, I could see him doing that, or I could see him using the wide side of the field, running towards their bench, bench maybe get Jack Abraham out in some space, give him the option. Mm -hmm. If he sees a little underneath crossing route or possibly a tight end or somebody underneath at the sticks, get it to him early. If not, pull it down and try to find a way to fight for the five, six yards you need for the first. Yeah, I like that too, AJ. 5.04 to go. North Texas looking for that elusive stop. Frank Gore back in the game and running back here. That's a good sign. Back out there with 121 rushing yards. Abraham rolls out right, throws complete, and they convert on third and five. How about that? Brandon Hayes having a big game. Didn't have a single touch all season, but he has four catches for 43 yards. True freshman from Hattiesburg. Has to feel good, too, when you're a quarterback and your play caller have the trust in you on a huge play like that to keep that drive moving. And even though he went out of bounds, the clock still rolls once spotted. Still one timeout remaining for North Texas. The time is running out now. Gore gets the handoff and picks up eight. He's going to be sore after this one. 22 carries. He also has a catch. He's going to be calling up Pops and saying, how, how have you done this every week for the last 20 years? Tell you what, it feels a lot better if you get a win. No kidding. Southern Miss is right on the cusp of that. Can they finish it? On second and two, Gore picks up one, so it'll be third and one. As the clock will tick down under three minutes before the next snap. As I mentioned, Southern Miss has FAU coming into town next week, 4 Eastern. Stadium has your coverage for that. North Texas close Charlotte at 8 Eastern time. Charlotte couple of tough losses to start the season. They're much better than their 0-2 record, and maybe Southern Miss is a lot better than their 0-3 record. All three losses at home. If they can pick up this first down, it's pretty much home free for their first win of the season. And they will. Boy, a frustrating evening for this defense. I mean, you make stop after stop to get them into third down, sometimes fourth down, but you can't make the big one that you need. They, they played very well at times tonight. The North Texas defense, they really did. First and 10, 2.15 to go. North Texas still holding on to that last timeout. Can't imagine they'd throw it here. It's a handoff. Mayberry tripped up after a pickup of three. A 
Now, Scotty Walden, after that loss last week to Tulane, went to the microphone after the game and apologized to his fans. He wanted everyone to know it was all on him and that he was the one that that loss was on, that ugly loss to Tulane. And what a way he and his team has responded on the road, no less. He thought that they focused too much on the rivalry aspect of that game last week against Tulane. They talked about it a lot during the week. And he, he thought that that was a mistake that he made, that they needed to focus more on themselves because they had things that they needed to get right. And he said, this week, we're not worried how many guys are out for North Texas, who's going to be in for North Texas, what they're going to do at quarterback. It's all about us this week. I think a lot of teams are kind of taking that approach with all the uncertainty in this season. You don't know who's going to be in, who's not, contact tracing, what's going on. Day to day, like their lives are changing so much. I think a lot of coaches are, are taking that approach to where, hey, we're going to master what we do, and then we'll start to, to worry about what our opponent's doing. And it looks like North Texas will call its final timeout. Timeout, North Texas. Their final. One minute timeout. Fourth down coming up. Want to tell you about our doubleheader next week, featuring this Southern Miss team that's going to be welcoming in Florida Atlantic. Both teams winning today, and will be in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Marshall finally back on the field. The last time we saw them, they were knocking off nationally ranked App State. Taking on a Western Kentucky team that picked up a victory today. It's next week on Stadium, 4 Eastern and 7.30 Eastern time. Southern Miss chartering back right after this game. I don't even think you need the jet engines. You just hop on Scotty Walden's back and he'll, he'll fly you all the way home. Yeah, I don't know if Scott is going to get a whole lot of sleep tonight. I don't know how he gets much sleep ever. And we're going to be talking with Scotty Walden at the conclusion of this game. I got to hand it to him. I thought he'd be a little bit more down this week talking to him compared to last. Not the case. I mean, he was still Not fired at up. All. He was fired up about his guys, too. About the week of practice they had. And a lot of times some coaches will say that. Lip service, yeah. Exactly. That wasn't the case. You believe, I believed it when Scotty told me this. But I said, all right, let's see if they carry it onto the field. Hey, they have. And on fourth and seven, Abraham's going to just go down with 32 seconds left. So North Texas will get it back at the 38-yard line, needing a quick score, an onside, and another quick score. No timeouts. They did score quickly the last time they had the ball. They did come close to recovering an onside kick. So there is still it's a chance. It's not over. You're right, Chris. The game is definitely not over. But whatever they do, they have to do it quickly. Ani, short pass. And Darden's able to get out of bounds in Southern Miss territory with 25 seconds left. Southern Miss hasn't won here since 2014. And in fact, they had lost three straight games to North Texas before last season's win at the Rock. Honey, far side of the field. Ogan Macon dropped it. 19 seconds left. Now, Southern Miss showed up, got off the bus, and they were looking to tackle today, something that they did not do last week. Yeah, you could kind of feel the, the attitude that they came in here with. Pre-game seemed like there was a lot of energy out there. Got chippy early on in this game. I feel like Southern Miss, as we see, continues to lay the wood here on North Texas offense. Yeah, Eric Scott, Jr., with a big hit. Frank Gore, Jr., 
one of the players of the game, no question. 23 carries, 130 yards, his first 100-yard game, and his first touchdown. Congratulations to the young man that they could not think more highly about. Darden makes another grab and picks his way close to a first down. But it's just short, and time will run out. And I think we just had a scoreboard point. Scotty Walden with his first win gets a big old bear hug. He can't, he can't contain his excitement. There's the Gatorade bath. It was green Gatorade. <laughs> oh, you gotta love the enthusiasm, but you know he's saying, I, I gotta go, I gotta go shake hands with Seth Luttrell. Gotta have your hand doors with Scotty because this guy gets so excited. Ton of respect here between these two guys too. And we told you the story earlier on. Four years ago, he was a head coach at a school near here, Division Three, East Texas Baptist. Heard Seth Patrell got the job here at North Texas. He's from the area. He drove over here, went to Seth's office at about 7.30 in the morning, hoping to talk to him. Seth Luttrell's assistant kept saying, you, you gotta leave, you, there's no way, he's not gonna talk to you, he just got the job, he's too busy. He said, that's all right, I'll just wait right here, I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. Got there at 7.30 in the morning, finally at about 3.30, Seth Luttrell had some time, Scotty Walden went in, they had a great conversation. He didn't get the job, but got on Seth Luttrell's radar, and he says he'll, he'll never forget it, and even though Seth Luttrell didn't give him a job, he said, look, I'm really appreciative that he took time out of his day to talk to me. And now we're setting him up to talk to him after his first victory. The Texas kid grew up in Texas. Played in Texas, yep. coached in Texas. Scotty Walden, <laughs> congratulations on your first victory as a head coach. Oh, thank you guys, appreciate it. This was uh, this one special, not just because of that, but the way everything turned out and our kids fighting through adversity and not being deep. And I mean, we did a lot of things on special teams tonight. We had to do a, a ton of things. This is the best thing about this is it's a team win, and uh, that's what I feel great at. These guys fought back from adversity; they never quit. Our coaches never quit, and I couldn't be more proud of this group. Scotty, what was the key? Like, what put you guys over the top to get this win? I, I'll tell you what it was, AJ, was was the poise that we showed when we when we hit adversity. We gave up a couple easy touchdowns there in the second half, or we didn't capitalize on offense. Nobody panicked. You know, in the past, we'd panic and, you know, and just, just not play mature football. And uh, instead of that, we, we bounced back tonight, and, and I thought we were poised in those adverse situations and uh, showed a lot of amazing leadership from our guys, and, and, and they were able to get it done. You gave up 430 yards on the ground last week. Yeah. So you said, we're going to tackle this yeah. week in practice. Yeah. Tuesday, you tackle for 30 minutes. Yeah. You're going to tackle again this week? It yeah. worked, man. Hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But we got to have to watch our depth, though, baby. We have to watch our depth. But uh, I give Tony Pecoraro and our defensive staff all the credit in the world, man. They 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 shook back when a lot of coaches, a lot of people wouldn't shake back from that, and they fought and they fought hard and they and they and we needed to tackle for 30 minutes. So that's what we did. And I, I'm, I'm I couldn't be more proud of our staff and our players right now, man. I really couldn't. You talk about full circle and the meeting you had here four years ago with Seth Luttrell, and this is where you pick up your first win as a head coach. Congratulations, Seth. Hey, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it, guys. Scotty Walden with his first win as a head coach, 30 years old, the youngest FBS coach in the country, and the player of the game, Frank Gore Jr., 23 carries, 130 yards, his first touchdown. The true freshman from Miami doing daddy proud. You could feel like he was poised for a breakout game. He had done good things earlier before this, but you know what? He needed kind of a showcase game where he put it all together. He was able to get in the end zone, got some tough yardage. You see 
the physicality in which he runs and how smart he is as well. His football IQ is off the charts. Frank Gore Jr., already a star, going to be an absolute superstar. Sometimes a change of scenery is all it takes. Three home losses, you hit the road, you pick up your first win of the season. And congratulations to Scotty Walden. For my broadcast partner, A.J. Hawk, and our entire crew, I'm Chris Hassel saying so long from Denton. Final score, Southern Miss 41, Mean Green 31. For more great college football coverage, along with daily studio programming and the latest news and information, visit watchstadium.com.